theory. And Mauler. What's the situation? God damn it. I thought it was another half an hour from now. I said You're my- late. <laughs> like, I literally sent him the link and then was like, well, I got to wait for a half hour or whatever. Yeah, you sent me the link to like go hop on a grenade. Like with this shit show of a stream, I come in, I'm echoing. <laughs> His mic isn't working. He's fucking <laughs> muted. Like what the hell's going on? I'm whatever, sorry. this guy's got a yellow filter. He's got jaundice over here. All right, I'm hacking away. Meanwhile, the, everything's falling apart. I'm on Rolling Stones trending for saying something I never goddamn said. It's you agreed. A, she said she said women ate Star Wars and he agreed. God, she it's said the worst women thing don't ever. watch Star Wars. And I laughed and I'm like, oh my God. Like, like and instead of like she's going off on a tangent, answering the question that I asked her about Charmin's stupid ass comment. And I'm not gonna interrupt her. I'm just gonna be like, well, whatever. You like this is I think my reaction says it all, but yeah, somehow that means I don't want women in Star Wars. So whatever. Hey, write an article about me. That's what journalism is now today. So okay. Um yeah, well, you come to learn pretty quickly that whoever you're talking to, if you don't, in essay format, disagree with everything they say that you don't necessarily align with, then you agree with them completely. It has to be an essay format. It's it's actually fucking weird, dude. It's like you you got to have like a full on PhD thesis. Like, it, it, well, actually, there are about seventy two point eight percent women that are actual Star Wars fans, and it's like, no, just let her talk. Who cares? She just said she doesn't watch Star Wars. She doesn't even know what it is. Well, and I mean, if you were to develop a perspective anyway, if you said to her, like, I actually, there's plenty of women that are interested, she might have said, like, no, I understand that. What I mean is, you know, and it could it could go different directions. You never oh, actually know. Oh, she she did. I've, I've spoken to her several times afterwards, and she's like, she was hit up by NBC to comment, and she's like, this is such nonsense. What is this? She's like, did, did I do something wrong here? I'm like, well, you said women don't watch Star Wars, and they're pretty upset about it. She's like, yeah, I see that. I I, I guess I was wrong. Do they actually watch Star Wars? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh, well, okay. Well, I guess I made a mistake then. Oh, no. Easy. Finish. Well, you can't make mistakes on the internet. You're not allowed. It's true. Hmm? And again, that's why I you should just never ask a woman her opinion about anything. Uh, that, that's the, really the lesson <laughs> learned from this entire thing theory, I feel. Oh, no. That's going to get clipped, too. Do your essay. Oh. Go. Oh, Tell no. Ryan he needs to be killed. No, Ryan, you can't say that. Like, <laughs> as much as we say as men, uh, humans are equal. We need to have equality and, like, everybody can. No, now, as people are going to think I'm being sarcastic, I, you just can't win. Yeah, you know, I've never been sarcastic in my life. So I don't really understand what that feels like, but it's such a weird time. It's I'm just, just trying to take the heat off you. You know what I mean? By oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> I think you he, add he, more. He, he said, he said that. You should never ask a woman their opinion, and he agreed. Dun, dun, the next dun. I had you had a bunch of fans that are lawyers reach out to me, and they're like, "You know, you could sue them." I'm like, "What? No, what is that going to do?" And it, it, it they're just going to change the title. Who cares? Yeah, no. I, I don't know. I I assume you weren't watching Mahler because you didn't even know you were supposed to fucking be here. So I assume I you was, weren't watching. But... It's the worst time because I I was literally ready to go. I was just like I have Discord open and for some reason I think it's my fucking microphone off. I didn't see the notification, so I was just like, eh, "Theory will DM me as soon as we're about to start." <laughs> I was just waiting. It's the worst kind of late ever. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't even like editing or fucking talking to anybody really. I was just sitting here. Just fucking sitting there staring in his face. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm ready to podcast. I have Let's nothing do to do. I wish the stream was going already. Uh, so w- what I said before you got here was th- there's so much gaslighting about that entire story right now of people saying, for anyone that says women have never been interested in Star Wars, I've been a fan since 1977. I love it. And it's like. Uh, My mom what? got me into Star Wars. The yeah, fact. it's like there's. There, I, I don't think there's very many people that are actually saying that. Uh, nobody that actually knows anything about Star Wars is saying that. Nobody that's actual Star Wars fan is saying that. What is okay is to acknowledge that there might be certain demographics that are, like, Star Wars is more appealable. Like, there's more boys that have been interested in Star Wars historically. That doesn't mean that girls weren't. That doesn't mean that there's no women. It just means most of the audience was made up of boys, made up of men. That's okay. It, well, it's okay in, in for fact- different audiences to be interested in different things. Ryan, in fact, that's exactly what Bob Iger said in his biography. Literally says that Star Wars, when purchased from George, we recognize that it's always been a male-dominant brand. 
with about I think he said it was ninety four percent men. Yeah, so ninety four so would so, shock me. Yeah, go ahead. Or or it was maybe even ninety six. Um, it's it's in the book. Like all you got to do is pull up the book and type it in. Um, in Kindle, but yeah, I don't really see what the big problem is. It's just what one person who's never seen Star Wars said. Like I don't like she made a mistake. What? Why are we? Is it true? No, it's not true. Of course, there are so many women who like Star Wars. I think we all know that. So what's, yeah. what's no one's trying to silence. It's it's just such a weird concept to me. I don't really understand it. But whatever. And it it's okay for things to be like more liked by one gender than another. I made the the thing with Barbie. Guess what? If uh, if they had taken the Barbie movie and tried specifically to market that movie, not to women, but to men, make the entire thing, market everything towards specifically men. Mm. I feel like a lot of people should rightly be upset about that. It's like, I grew up with Barbies. I was a big fan of Barbie for a long time. I followed along this. I had all these things. And now you're trying to inherently change the fan base for some reason. Um, Like you'd have the same type of thing. I think that's probably way more female dominant than Star Wars is male dominant personally, just a guess. But- It's nothing wrong with acknowledging that different brands appeal to different people. That's okay. Not everything has to be the exact 50-50 split. And well, I think it's actually nice that Disney's appealed Star Wars to women as well. Because when I have a daughter one day, hopefully, she's going to enjoy. But that's the thing is that she would have enjoyed Star Wars anyways. Yes. Yeah. So, and the, it, it, you know, it. in my mind, it doesn't make much of a difference, but you know, I remember uh, I had a friend, she was like, oh, I think it's really cool that they have Ray now. And I'm like, yeah, but they got Ahsoka. Ahsoka's a much better character and actually has some good character development. What do you want? Like, your daughter to look at Ray and be like, oh, everything just kind of comes easy. Well, no, you want a really good, fleshed out, developed character. So, if we have females like Asajj Ventress, which is why I'm happy that she's coming back, because it's like, it's dope if we have chicks that are actually written well, and not these stupid horribly written characters like ray or reva that's reva. what i'm hoping for yeah reva, reva, Mahler's favorite right there. yeah i think good stories will draw people in will, will draw more people in regardless of their gender right telling good stories as opposed to targeting that's and a crazy idea you got right there that's I literally what i say in the internet it's it's clipped out it's literally what i say in the internet i'm like i'm like what's your view on what charmine said about a time a woman shaped star wars and not so much focusing on the gender of the character rather than focusing more on the stories being told and the character development and then she went off on her on her bit and that was and that was the end that was my last question it was the end of our our discussion so whatever man the internet's always going to try and paint me a certain way and that's fine yeah i mean well, I'm glad everyone to... on the internet takes me completely seriously and with all my context at all times. So. I was going to say, what yeah, if you'll ever get to yeah. Ryan's phase where it's just he's given up caring? He'll just, it's not even playing into it. It's playing well past it at this point. I have given up <laughs> caring. I don't, I don't care. I cared a few years ago, but when the Pablo thing happened, that's when I, that's when my metamorphosis happened, started. I stopped caring. Yeah. Uh, like it, it is what it is. And, uh, everybody here that like watch whole thing context, they they kind of get it. There's gonna be people that hate you no matter what. So whatever. Uh, yeah. The the reality is, whenever you look out at it, all this stuff in the landscape, whenever you look at your like ratios, whenever you look at the comments people have in your video, it's like it could seem like from a random Twitter perspective because you know one person uh, that really despises you gets a lot of likes or whatever. When you actually come back and like look at your channel, you're like, okay, this video that everyone's so upset about apparently has a 98.9 percent like ratio so well, like who's really mad about this is it people that watch or is it people that just you know don't watch or never would anyway i don't even really to be honest care about that it's not even like a ratio thing if i have like one person who's my friend and cool about it sweet i've had so many dms and messages from so many women in my request folder that have actually been really endearing being like this is insane. I can't believe they're saying this about you. You don't know me, but I watch your channel. I mean, my husband loves your channel, blah, 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 this and that. And it's like, it's, it's nice to see, nice to read. But that's not what you see out in the media. All you see in the media is Rolling Stone bullshit article mm. by some dumbass that wrote it because they have nothing nothing else to talk about. And that's journalism today. So it's like, eh, 
do your thing, make your money. Go ahead. Well, it feels like I'm, I'm stuck in a bit of a juxtaposition of like simultaneously, I see it and I'm like, well, yeah, that's what always happens. But then simultaneously, I'm also kind of like, huh, there it goes again, another one. Because uh, we, we've had it on, on EFAT now since 2019. We uh, we said that Jenny Nicholson had a bad take on Joker, the movie, and it's followed mm -hmm. us forever. Where it's uh, it just comes up in tweets and Reddit threads all the time that they did a stream sh like like being misogynistic and saying that a woman is like awful at reviewing film. We were just like, no, we didn't. We 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 said that she had a bad take. She said the Joker was bad, and she said just to give you an example, she said that what's the film about? How he is not supposed to take medication? And we were like, no, that's not what the film's about at all. And and that it's really retarded that you'd say that. But then it, because it was her, we had like we you can find it. It's just every day because it's a really good like point farming thing. To be mm -hmm. like, there's a podcast that talked about it for 11 hours. They just ripped down women because women are not allowed to have opinions. We were said they were like, that's like, I think the third woman we've covered in like a bazillion episodes. We we very much more so go after male creators, mainly because I guess that's there's just more male creators than there are female creators uh, on average. Um, uh, not like necessarily in the world, but in on YouTube. Um, because, so yeah, I, I, it just seems that way. I, I don't know. Those situations, I like to thanks, thanks, Kaido. Uh, I'll probably be live later tonight. So, with those situations, I like to kind of just take, you know, what if, what if the person we're talking about just swapped genders for a minute? You know, would people still be up in arms? You know, like for example, the thing you just said with uh, Jenny Nichols, Nicholson, but yeah, Nicholson. Um, if if you were talking about a man, would people be up in arms? You know, probably not. No, well, they, they provably went. We did like a movie Bob or whoever else. We've done like 10 hours on them and nobody gives a shit. It was funny. We did one like famously on, uh, I think it was uh, not Synthetic Man. It was uh, Cinematic Venom. We like ripped him apart for I think nine hours. And he's come on in the past month. He came onto the show and we like had a back and forth. It was really chill. And it's just like, yeah, because we're not like trying to destroy people. We're just looking at their videos and kind of laughing if they have, you know, crazy perspectives or whatever. At right. least from our POV. But we did it. 99% was men. First time we did it to like a woman or like I said, maybe the third time. I can't quite remember, but uh, uh, pissed off the Internet hugely. Yeah, I seem to remember I gave a take about a Batman movie that's followed me around for a while. Dude, yeah, what the fuck? People keep being like, he's hanging out with a racist. Like, I've yeah. had, right, I have people who don't like you in my Discord defending you on that point. They're like, listen, you can rip into Ryan for like really valid things, but that video, he just, he, he was not, he was not saying he hates black people. That's not what it was. Like, no, not at all. And it's like, and I'm even like, listen, I'm super fair. I'm sitting in my car. My beard's a little long. I think I've got a hat on maybe in that one. I look super racist. I get it. But, but yeah, the take was not at all what people make it into. And then I think the thing that makes me more upset than anything else is the story's evolved into he hates the Batman because it has too many good black people. It's like, listen, I really like the Batman. <laughs> that, that's the thing that offends me more that they think I don't like the movie. Uh, when I actually did, so, um, I gave it gave it an eight out of ten when I uh, when I watched it. A lot it. more than I gave it. I, I think I would downgrade. Like after a couple rewatches, I think that the end is such a mess. I'd probably you know bring it down to like seven or so. But I still really enjoyed it. In the first two thirds of that movie, I actually I really dig it. But yeah, I'm With innovating. You guys, you guys keep talking. I'm innovating. Okay. Mm, okay. Alive. There you go. He's evolving. He is. I, I felt I, like uh, you, you, you do your, you do your takes now, just knowing they'll get clipped and almost playing into it, like on FNT. The favorite thing for me on FNT is I feel like you and I get uh, cheap and quick jokes in that nobody else hears. Like, <laughs> I just feel like we have like this little tunnel that <laughs> goes underneath everybody. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's just a little <laughs> offhanded comment where like. <laughs> Like in the middle of Shad going off about like AI art or something, where I'm about to like Dude. shoot myself. What did he and, say? Uh, where he was like, "Oh, my kids, they love the merchandise to do with uh, something." And then he was like, "Oh, they want they want like a pillow. It'll be that franchise. They want cheese. It'll be." <laughs> what was like? What the fuck was it? I mean, bat, my my kid asked me for bat cheese. <laughs> what was? <laughs> and he didn't understand. He was like, "What's wrong? Bat cheese." Like that's weird, Shad. What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, my kid's obsessed with with Batman. He asked me for bat cheese, and you just start dying. 
and like everybody else, like it's just staring at their phones or like staring. It, this is like a three hour mark, right? So people are like disengaged, and the, me, you and me are just dying. I mostly was dying because you were dying, just milking bats and making cheese. Like, what the fuck? Oh, bats have nipples. Can you milk them? Uh. Uh, but yeah, dude. It's yeah, fun. legit. It felt like nobody else on the cast had any clue what uh what had just been said. I don't know. I guess people in chat got it though. So did you uh again since you didn't know we were streaming, uh Theory did a reaction to the Bad Batch season three trailer. Which Oh uh, right, yeah, I've had a couple of messages about this. So that's 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 the end of it now, right? Like, this will be the last season for the Bad Batch. Yes. Uh last season of the Bad Batch. But there's I haven't a, seen uh, any Bad Batch for the record. We haven't seen Clone yeah, Wars either. Yeah, we haven't seen Clone Wars either, man. Well, I mean, it's good to clarify, though, right? Because I might have seen Bad Batch and not Clone Wars, which would probably upset you more. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that would because it's, it's uh, be Clone so Wars weird. Considerably much better. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I listen. I know theory. You've been like begging for Muller to watch Clone Wars. I have too, and I think for different reasons. I think because you think he's gonna love it, and I think he's gonna hate it. Hmm. Do you think he's gonna hate it? Hmm. I think so. Did you hate um, it? I had a really hard time watching it. I didn't like it, but it was Star Wars. So I was like trying to get, I was trying to consume it. I had all the DVD sets up through season four, and then I was just like, I like Maul coming back was like my breaking point where I'm like, I can't pretend that I'm okay with any of this. Um, Wait, you and, didn't watch uh, season five? Oh, I watched it all, but like I, I actually like bought the DVD sets and I watched a lot of the special like behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I have yeah. all those sets all the way up through four. And then I was like, I, I just can't pretend that I'm like I, that. I love this. Like I love the rest of Star Wars. Damn. Um, what, didn't, what didn't you like about it? Um, well, we've talked about it a lot before. It's I, I feel like. I feel like it's hard to justify in my mind that a lot of things that happen in Clone Wars are like actually in line with the movies. I don't believe that Count Dooku fought Obi Wan and Anakin like eight times in between Geonosis right. and when we see in Revenge right. of the Sith. Right. I really don't like the way General Grievous is depicted in a lot of it. Um, like the fact that the first time, like, and, and this is not Ahsoka in like season six or something or season five. This is like episode seven of the Clone Wars that when Grievous meets Ahsoka in in that little uh, passageway and the ship she shouldn't survive that encounter like against general grievous oh, but she right. actually goes toe to toe with him for about with 10 seconds first. yeah right. like like she should not survive that encounter no um, she should have been dead yeah and, and so there's just like things like that along the way that i really didn't like and i think that i oh, people really loved matt lantern's matt lantern's portrayal of uh of anakin and I get it, but I don't think I can connect the characters with Hayden's portrayal. I think it's a different character. I think it's from the beginning, from the Clone Wars movie and the first season of Clone Wars all the way to the end, it feels like a different character to me yeah. than Hayden's Anakin. So yeah. it was really tough for me to connect these things in my mind to the movies because I just didn't feel like it fit. So that was a big problem I had with it in general. Yeah, no, I could see that, but... But the thing with Anakin, it shows more of like a nicer side of him. The Anakin from from Hayden, I felt like was, in my opinion, better because it was just and this is a directing thing. You know, I, I think they needed to either use Hayden or they needed to find someone that uh, or direct Matt in a way where he wasn't so I don't want to say optimistic, but maybe a little more broody like yeah. Hayden was. Yeah. Well, more yeah, like in his head. It, especially because I believe if I have the timeline right, we're talking about like six to eight weeks after Attack of the Clones is when yeah. you first start off in like TCW. That is not a lot of time, <laughs> especially no. when Anakin should have been like recovering from injury and things like that. Um, so it just it's just a different and I get it. I, it's you know, it's geared towards a younger audience and things like that. So I, I understand. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, I, I think all of Star Wars, you know, should be attacking like that, that audience, that same age demographic. Right. And but it just didn't feel like that to me. No, yeah, no, I, I, I don't disagree, man. But I, I still liked it. I just um, 
I think it just has a completely different feel. And I think that's what kind of what it's like its own thing almost. It like connects the stories in a different way. Yeah. And that's why I'm interested to know what Mala thinks of it. Uh, it's pretty well, crazy for somebody to right now in 2024 go in and watch Clone Wars for the first time. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. Well, he's supposed to watch the 2D one with me, with the, the one by Gendy Tartarovsky. Um, oh, well, that one. His name right I love that. Um, yeah, that one's because, sick. It, I, I love it because obviously it's uh, like the animation style. It's like a, a little like overboard and stuff like that. But the feel of the characters to me is much more in sync with between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, what, um, I don't disagree. Ryan, what's your take on the Mortis stuff? The Mortis stuff is weird, um, but I, I feel like the Mortis stuff, there is there is George in the Mortis stuff. Yeah. 100% is like a George thing. Yeah. Um, I guess my my main problems with it are the fact that it's carried on so much specifically for ahsoka <laughs> like since then uh, where people want to say well they have every excuse in the world for ahsoka is like well technically she is you know she was revived by a force god and blah 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 uh -huh. and also the other reason i i like the episodes themselves and like the <laughs> idea of them being in this dimension but the entire description of balance as it's described in the mortis arc yeah runs counterintuitive to the way george has always described what balance means every time you hear george talk about the force and being in balance he's not talking about a balance between the light and the dark side he's balance means the absence of darkness and when any darkness starts to creep in it throws off balance You've got clips of him sitting there right in front of like the clone war staff with dave floney taking notes while he's talking about the force that way um so the idea then of creating this system where you have someone who's trying to keep the dark and light side in balance is a little bit counterintuitive to the idea of the way the force is being described before, if that makes sense. Mm, theory doesn't look convinced. Um, so I remember the scene you're talking about where, go ahead. Let me see if I can find that clip where George is specifically yeah, talking. I, about I remember that. the clip where everyone's taking notes. It's, it's uh... yeah, yeah, bring it, it up. Is... If there's anything I've learned over the time of getting really into like understanding the fans' perspective with uh, interacting with them and you know reviewing Star Wars movies, it's that there's a couple of schools of thought on this, the the balance of the Force, and some of them are pretty funny. Um, but, I'm assuming, <coughs> did you ever cover the uh, the Freddie Prince Jr. rants theory? I did. Yeah, I did. I thought it was yeah. absolutely ridiculous. I I don't know what funny his though. Is. Where yeah, is I don't know what his problem is. He was like you have you have Palpatine and then you have Anakin and so Palpatine well, gets it's... Anakin over to the dark to create two dark siders and then the Force counters with two twins being light siders and then everyone's just like what about Yoda and Obi Wan <laughs> he's just like mm -hmm. and, and also what about his really own fucking character who is still alive <laughs> Kanan is still like Kanan is still there like his character that he plays still exists yeah. during that timeline and he's so stupid he forgot about that. We covered no, this one. I, just, I don't. I don't know why he would go on that. The, the main rant I'm talking about is where he. It's people like him who really purport the idea that because you don't like Ray, it means that you don't like girls. He's like, you're just mad because Han Solo gave the Millennium Falcon to a fucking girl, and it's like, cool, dude. Yeah, let's use that position that you have to purport this absolute nonsense. Cool, sweet. Maybe she's she's a shit character. How about? We never had a problem with Ahsoka or Asajj or uh, Mara Jade or Vasla Shan or anybody the other. You know what's characters. crazy? Most people didn't say much about Jyn Erso either. It was kind of nobody like, said eh. anything about Jyn Erso. She was fine. Why? Because she was written well. She was written okay. Because <laughs> she's <laughs> there's not a lot well, going on for her com compared to Ray. I mean, oh my god, look that. Well, compared to Riva. Yeah, you can. The Jyn Erso has a start, middle, and end, I guess, of the Empire like ruining her life, and then she gets to strike at their heart at the end, sort of thing. It's like, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm sharing this clip uh, from George right here. All right. If you can add it. Oh, here. sorry. Got yeah. It. <laughs> There's it's too exciting. much mucus I'll in my, uh, my I'll sinuses. I'll by next time. I'm All right, here we go. It might be a little low, but I got to turn up as much as I can. Yeah, go for it. And binds us 
the core of the force. I mean, you got the dark side, the light side. One is well, selfless, I mean... one is selfish. And you want to keep them in balance. What happens when you go to the dark side is it goes out of balance and then you get really selfish and you forget about everybody and you ultimately lead yourself because when you get selfish, you get stuff or you want stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you want stuff and you get stuff, then you get are afraid somebody's going to take it away from you, whether it's a person or a thing or mm -hmm. a, a particular pleasure experience. So that's what I'm talking about there. When he talks about balance, it, like, to me, when I when I hear him talk about this, the balance is not a balance between light and dark. The balance to him means absence of dark. <laughs> when you start to go towards the dark side, you go out of balance is what he said. Do you can, know what I mean? Can you play it again? Like maybe 20 mm -hmm. seconds back. Yeah, yeah. The core of the force. I mean, you got the dark side, the light side. One is selfless, one is selfish. And you want to keep them in balance. What happens when you go to the dark side is it goes out of balance and then you get really selfish and you forget about everybody and you ultimately lead yourself because when you get selfish, you get stuff or you want stuff. And when you want stuff and you get stuff, then you get are afraid somebody's going to take it away from you, whether it's a person or a thing or a, a particular pleasure. What's interesting about that is that I actually think the English he's using is not quite precise because i actually b agree with ryan's interpretation but the the words he uses when he says you have the light side and the dark side and there's a balance the real the implication is that you stay in the middle of them yeah with with a line like that but the thing right. is i don't think that's what george means i don't think he means stay in the middle of light and dark yeah and, and that's what i mean he's talking about it. he's not like writing a book or an essay like a, i think he does I think I think that's exactly what he means, actually. But, but I don't then, think that matches the OT story at all. Be, because then the inverse no. of that, this is what I'm saying, the inverse of that would mean that when you're pure, when you're selfless, that it throws the force out of balance. That would be that would have to be true for that no, to be you, what he means. No, but you got to look at how he wrote the prequels. The Jedi fell because they were way too entrusting of politics, so they were not in balance anymore. And that's why Dooku left. That's why Qui-Gon wasn't on the council, because he just didn't give a shit. He's like, these guys are tof just full of shit at this point. They're not really trusting in the Force. So I, I think there's something we could take away from this, actually, that, that there's more underlying in there than... Uh, but the thing about that is they I also think... fell because of a hyper dark side user. He killed well, to, them all. To me, the, the, the story of why the Jedi fell is because... They started this dogmatic adherence and allegiance to a government instead of to the force. Yeah. Um, now, that to me doesn't necessarily have anything to do with them, um, you know, getting get a little more towards like darkness and falling out of balance and like that. To me, that is a um, a lesson that when you start being aligned to something that is not the will of the force, that's the end result of what we saw. That's why the Jedi fell. But yeah, yeah, yeah I, go ahead. I, I could see that. No, I, I just said the way I think he wrote the prequels is that they were so flawed, that the Jedi were so flawed with their politics that it just completely threw everything off balance. But then in the end, um, it, it also makes me wonder, like, you know, how, how much of a hand did he have in, in Luke going on after Return of the Jedi with how he started to use the new Jedi or his new philosophy of what a Jedi is by using more aspects of the force and kind of being like well we're not going to follow the same rules as the prequel trilogy or the or the originals and kind of just go along with you know like oh i can't use the force powers because then i'm on dark side instead of actually he was like oh no I'd, I'd i'll rather use all these powers and then have my ability as a jedi to dictate remaining in the light or not just by not being a bad person instead of being afraid of oh if i do this then i'm a bad guy or if i do this then i'm a good guy he was more so, and that's what I liked about Luke, and that's what I was hoping we would have seen in The Last Jedi, that he was just more so powerful in his choices, at least. The funny thing about this is I find that like, at this point we get into the interesting nature of like political systems falling apart as opposed to the Jedi fell too far into the light, and that's what their like, problem was in the prequels. Yeah. I, I would I would argue like that's, that's I find the prequels super interesting for the fact that they show like how a system can fall apart from the inside, but you know I wouldn't want to discount as well that the most evil son of a bitch in history was the one that was controlling things from the inside that also matters. Yeah. So 
so so like that yeah that, that's why when when i when i see that george has said like ah, i get it bring him balance by knocking out palpatine and himself i'm like right so the dark side once the dark side's gone there is literally balance. yeah yeah and and that's kind of that's what i mean because if you're if you're gonna argue that um well the, the, that way of seeing it that balances this perfect like equal thing like is kind of portrayed in mortis um and that that's kind of why i have a trouble like connecting that because to me that would mean that if you're selfless if there's all this pure and goodness in the galaxy uh that the force would be out of balance so when 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 luke skywalker they're on the death star blah 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 you know palpatine dies Vader is redeemed now the force is out of balance <laughs> Right. That's that would be like the implication in that. Right. It doesn't really too, many light, yeah. too many light users. We gotta get some dark users. We covered someone right. on EFAP who legit was under the impression that it's individual count of users. Like that, that's how you balance the force. So if there's three dark siders, we gotta have three light siders. If the three dark siders kill the three light siders, three light siders are immediately born. Like they, they were convinced that's how the world works. Right. And it's kind of weird with the Jedi. They're like <laughs> balance just if there's zero dark siders and like a uh, ten thousand Jedi. It's like well, that's not balance. So yeah. then I guess that's why Dave created uh, Bendu. Fucking Bendu. Which, honestly, that thing fuck confuses the shit out of me. Yeah. Bendu's a funny name. Like, well, who's this, who this, who this giant cow? Like, Mahler's also wait, not watched Rebels. Giant cow? Uh, Mahler's also not watched Rebels, so he doesn't know Bendu, who's basically... There's a giant cow. There's a giant Bendu cow. the giant cow. This sounds like a meme. Are you fucking with me? I don't think he's no, a cow, not, is yeah. he? Bring him up. Oh, let me look at him. He's a he's a cow. He's a big cow. <laughs> he's like a giant cow. I need to tell Rags and Frankie about this. He's a giant cow. Is he not? Chat. Like, what is he? A, a... Yeah, yeah. Everyone <laughs> knows Ben. Do the giant. Cow. He looks more like a moose to me. <laughs> whatever, moose, cow, whatever. You can milk them both. Uh, <laughs> be careful though. <laughs> right, hold on. Image. Oh, I'm pulling up this image. Here we go. Um. Giant cow. Here we go. Yeah, famously drunk 3BO didn't watch Rebels. Yeah. Hey, I'm he's in my team. I'm sharing it. Yeah, whatever. This is he's, uh, the Ben do. The giant. Man, he does what exactly? He's like a force guy. He's a he's he's some I don't know what. <laughs> A goat, a giant goat with antlers. He's a space goat. Okay. Yeah, and he, and he kind of um, voiced by Tom Baker. Well, that's cool. It is voiced by Tom Baker, and he is kind of yeah. it, it, it's hard to describe. He essentially provides guidance to Kanan specifically. It just so happens that they end up making base on this freaking planet where Bendu just so happens to exist to give this guidance to Kanan, but kind of teaches him to embrace a, a little bit different aspects of the force yeah. and again this is so this is nothing to do with like this is solely a disney dave filoni like work that's what rebels is so yeah i don't what do you make of him vanishing with uh Thrawn? i i don't freaking know dude like i i rebels to me is I get some people love it and I, you know, there, there's some people I know that like means a lot to them and everything. I'm not a big rebels fan. I think there's a couple like, you know, cool episodes. I think for the most part, the reason that people are so attached to rebels is because they're attached to clone wars. So they really like, uh, when Ahsoka's there, they really like the mall episodes, like all of that stuff because of how much they care about clone wars. Right. I don't know if the characters of Ezra and Kanan stand by themselves all that much, in great grand scope of star wars however i will say that i think that kanan and Hera's connection is is cool and seeing what kanan does to save everybody it's yeah. you know it i feel something when that happens even if i don't really like the characters right. so i think that rebels is a little bit worse than clone wars but i i get why a lot of people are very attached to it yeah i was never too into rebels to be honest but yeah it's it was okay it was all right i just didn't find myself getting so attached to the characters like you said i hate listen i hate sabine 
Uh, I'm not a big fan of Space Aladdin Ezra. Um, yeah, I don't like Ezra very much. Mm. That'll be annoying. Ahsoka, I like Kanan more. Ahsoka pops up again, Mahler. Ahsoka pops up in what season two of Rebels, and you find out that um, find out that Ahsoka lives, and you know she's yeah. played a very instrumental role in the creation of the entire rebellion. By the way, that's what we find out in that. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of season two. End of season two, I think, right? Where um, she faces Vader. Right, Theory? End of season two of Rebels? Don't ask me, man. I don't know Rebels all that well. But all yeah, right. I think so. I, I'm, I, I love Disney Star Wars so much. But um, the end of season two, she faces off with Vader. And this entire huge Sith temple is like crumbling around them as they've gone there to get a Sith holocron and Maul happens to be there and he tricks Ezra into helping him get a Sith holocron. It's a whole big deal. But anyway, they freaking battle and Ahsoka's facing Vader and she decides to like stay there and fight and let them get away because mm -hmm. I'm not leaving you again. Right. And a lot of people thought that was like a super powerful moment and the temple comes crumbling down around them and at the end, you basically see Vader emerge from there very damaged and battered and beaten. But Ahsoka's dead. That's the implication. Until season four of Rebels, when Ezra uses the world between worlds to essentially go back to that place in space time and pull Ahsoka into oh. the world between worlds. There's and two seasons between that payoff? Yeah. I think so, right? Season that four sounds is... more like a retcon at that point as opposed to something they intended. Hey. I mean, I'm I, I might like I could have the seasons wrong, but I don't think I do. I do think that was World Between Worlds in season four when he saves Ahsoka. Yeah, that's why I didn't. Susan Bull has no idea what Ryan's talking about. Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> I had to edit uh, a lot of the Ahsoka episodes, and so I had to go look at those clips. I know. Yeah, I didn't. I was, I'm not a fan of World Two Worlds. I mean, I think there's a lot of fun, interesting stuff we could get from it, like we saw in the Ahsoka show. But at the end of the day, it just doesn't really. I just don't like time travel stuff. And as much as Dave Filoni wants to say it's not time travel, I mean, you're literally going back in time and altering that timeline by taking someone out who died, like. How, how is that not time travel? But almost argue the only way it's not time travel is that it is time travel plus. There are things you can do in the world between <laughs> worlds beyond time travel, even. Is it, so, literally, yeah. Yeah. You see Ahsoka limp out of the temple as well. Yeah, but only afterwards. Only after she was taken out of there. And then she went back in. Yeah. So like that, I don't even know what happened with that. Too. Yeah. So the original version, she dies, and then the, the altered version with Ezra, it's like, uh, what, she pretends to die or she escapes? How does that work? Ask Dave Filoni. Yeah, maybe. Will maybe we'll find Wales out in Ahsoka Season 2. Will Between Worlds confirms the timeline Star Wars is fixed, meaning Ahsoka was always meant to be saved through... The will between worlds which i don't even know what to C correct right the, the implication is that that action by ezra that takes place a couple years after happened and we saw that happen that she was saved in that moment that's oh, why it happened that's why she didn't die that that's what we're, that's what that is implying. She, she didn't actually die the chats was saying the chat saying i don't remember uh, I yeah remember yeah like exactly that that's the order of the that's the implication from what happens is you see that she gets saved by Ezra and pulled in the world between worlds. And that when she then exits the world between worlds, there is kind of, the, to me, that's the implication of that's the timeline where she gets saved. And that is always what happens. If that makes sense. Yeah, but that's what we're saying. But what's chat saying that, that, that happened in season two, that, that no. you see her, that you see her limping out of the temple um, yeah, but you don't like see that in season life. two. You don't see that in season two before the world between worlds. You see that we can pull up the scene in season four, right? Like in 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 season two or whatever, the, the the door closes and that's it. We don't see them again. Vader, Sith Temple scene from Rebels. Ryan, Ryan, look, this is the internet. This is the internet. Look. Ryan is foolish. Uh, no, I've seen wait, several wait, people wait, say it. Wait, 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 wait. Ryan is right. <laughs> hey. I see people say, like, Ryan has no idea what he's talking about. It's like, why can't you just say you disagree? Yeah. <laughs> Ryan has no idea. 
Yeah, look, I, I, I can't really remember. <laughs> I'm trying to find the full scene so we can watch it. Uh, oh, do you? So let me see what I can find while we're talking. You guys can keep talking while I'm looking. Last um, mm, okay. one's in season two. Yeah, I was just reading Chad. Okay, so she does limp out at the end of season two. Weird. Hmm. Well, then, like maybe it was planned. Then I don't know because, like, I just I was curious if uh, if what we saw overall then was him changing his mind, Filoni, on whether or not what he wanted to do with the Soaker, or if. Uh... No, I I think he always planned to not have her die. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yeah, I don't think he'll ever. Uh, he would never her. actually kill her. Okay, but then you would have to find out again. You'd have to find out why that happened. The idea that, um, the idea that her and Vader were fighting, and they just you know, before Ezra came there, that they just decided to stop and be like, "Well, I guess we're done now," and he walks away. I don't think that that, I don't think that no. happened. No, probably not. But again. Why the fuck can't I find this scene? Vader leaves the temple, season two, Rebels. Oh, I typed in Ahsoka dies, and I think I found it. At least it looks like it. I don't know if this is what you're looking for, but I uh, popped it in private chat. Yeah, I was trying to get this lighting right. I just can't, just can't do it. Oh, Ahsoka's fuck. real death. Is this like an edit? <laughs> I don't know. Because uh, I'm just not familiar enough. But uh, what Theory was saying about the door closing, you can see that in there and then. That's just that's just like an edit, I think. This is an edit saying that this is how she should have stayed dead. <laughs> just for the it's record. Surprising amount of people who feel that way. Well, it's just it's a very fitting end. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty good, I guess. Like that that to me, even as someone who thinks that Ahsoka should have died in like the Clone Wars time frame, if you're going to keep her alive, I, I do think that that's that's a very nice way for the story to end. Is mm -hmm. her facing off against her old master and saying, "You know, I'm not leaving you," and that's how she perishes. If uh, if Clone Wars all came out today, how do you think it would be received? Um, I mean, it's quite well. Like I think better there's... or worse than it currently is. Probably better than <laughs> so, comparison. From my experience with my channel, uh, I was like the only Anakin fanboy. I was made fun of for being an Anakin fanboy for years. I used to have the cutouts behind me and this and that. Oh, he only cares about Anakin, this and that. And now Anakin's super mainstream. Hayden's mainstream. Hayden's in Star Wars. and So it's like, I think if Clone Wars were released today, it would be so well received uh, beyond, you know, Beyond even Clone Wars season seven was, so I think it'd be great. I mean, because I, mean, I think you might be right in terms of just everyone be like, this is closer to what everyone would actually want as opposed to you know Reva or uh, just Nobody shows. Nobody wants like, Reva. Yeah, I've never met a single person. I've never seen a single thread online about how great of a character Reva was. It's really hard to talk about her story without sounding like an idiot, as in like. She wanted to kill innocent people in order to get to the, have the chance to kill Kenobi because he's the reason that she was killed. You know, like it's just like whoa, whoa, whoa. It, it makes absolutely no sense, and it's just so nonsensical to even have that to be a primary focal point of a story, which is about freaking Obi Wan and Darth Vader. We don't give a shit about this new made up character. Piss off. Yeah. So, basically, what happens to catch Mauler up? There's this big confrontation. There's Ahsoka, and actually, to be honest, they ripped off this part for the Obi Wan series. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know if you've ever seen people talk about that, but essentially, like the temple's coming down around everybody, and you see—I want to see the Vader part where he walks out. Come on, probably a little before. Where the fuck am I? There's a scene where you see Vader walking out right here. I don't, I'm keeping it down so we don't get hit with the music. You see Vader walking out of the temple. You see the fucking owl. Oh, that's the sister, right? Yes, exactly. And then uh -huh. see, you see him getting this, better at this. And then down here, somehow, you see a, the limping form of Ahsoka right here. 
Oh, and that's from season yeah, two. That, that's from season two. So they always plan to like, go back yeah. and save her that way. And what I want to know is what happens, right? Because she never shows back up for years and years. She doesn't show back up. So what mm-hmm. I want to know is like what happens to Ahsoka after Ezra pulls her out and then she goes back to find her place, which I think is here um, in the world between world. Or oh, wait, yeah, sorry. How does this make sense world. with Ezra pulling her out then? My interpretation of it is that uh, in a lot, what a lot of people say is that Ahsoka didn't want to re- didn't want to mess with the timeline of things. So she went back here to let things play out the way they should have played and waited there for a while. What? Yes. Instead of just immediately coming back and, and helping out with everybody. Do you agree theory? I'm sorry. I was I'm not listening. paying attention. I'm, I was blowing out my freaking brains. People I thought you were in my nose. I was farting. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I was <laughs> freaking blowing my nose, man. I'll just, I'll just mute and do it on camera. Yeah. And then you get the uh, the sick thing at the end of Ezra with a Sith holocron. And then at the beginning of season three, he's like, yeah, I'm super edgy now. I cut my hair. And now I'm using yeah. dark side. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think it was a like a retcon to do that. But like I think I always planned on doing that. They planned the Logan <laughs> Wills thing? Or? <laughs> yeah, I, I think Filoni planned that. Not a great addition, I reckon. Blowing my brains out. Isn't it if like anybody dies now? There's a question of the will between wills. wills. Um yeah, that's the problem. Right? And I'm still kind of confused with Ahsoka, so it's like, you know. When she fell off, did she get resurrected or was that a dream or was she just floating in the water the whole time and it was in her head? I've seen so like I've I've seen a lot of fans of it claim that yes, yeah, she did die and Anakin like sent got her back in the game, so to speak. Which I don't know what to say about. You know what I mean? Like I'm just like I don't uh well, it's like how many times are you gonna die? Well you cut her head off and she's gonna keep living? Or it's, it's well, is she even killable now? Is she like Ahsoka the White? Where she's like immune? But then again, she ran away from Balin, so you know, I assume she she actually is still is she can be killed. I'm guessing, but I don't know. Would that even make sense if she was killed? So if you if she, she fell off a cliff, how is she alive? Did, did you watch a lot of the any of the behind the scenes stuff that they showed with Hayden and everything? Because when when they're talking to it, or even when that line right that everyone's pointing to to be like, obviously this is Hayden who already went through the fight with Luke and like knows all this stuff. They're, they're talking about it like they wanted it to be super ambiguous. They didn't want to define it. I think they wanted people asking these questions and whether making up your own theory or story or whatever. They didn't want to define it at all. Mm. That's how I feel about it, at least. Wait, someone said she's potentially immortal because she's fused with a daughter from Mortis. So who said the daughter got killed? The daughter did get killed, but she's following her around as the owl called Morai. But what I'm saying is so, that if the daughter got killed, how is infusing yourself with the daughter making you immortal? Well, because yeah. the, the daughter got killed by another god, like another DT being. So you're immortal, brother. and other than other Mortis beings can kill you. Yes, or unless you like, have unless you have the dagger of Mortis, Mahler. Right, which is like right. Superman getting stabbed with a, a Kryptonian sword. Or unless you're Anakin and just uses a lightsaber randomly. On Reva. <laughs> yeah, so I, I imagine if I got all of this firsthand from the stuff itself, I'm probably not going to be super happy with it. Especially compared to just... I don't know if this is a bit insane and lofty compared to just having characters going through difficult or interesting or different things. Like uh, this, this feels a little like it's it's trying to be bigger than it has the capacity to to control, especially with the will between worlds. So the uh, the daughter basically <laughs> dies because the son is trying to kill the father, 
with the dagger of Mortis or the blade of Mortis. And like the daughter gets in the way and he stabs her. And as she's dying, the father fucking uses the last of her life essence to bring Ahsoka back to life in the third episode of the Mortis arc. Yeah, it's a little confusing. I think that's I think that's what happens. I just okay, so like to try and level this out, like when I think of the stuff I love about Star Wars, and I'll I'll use the prequels as an example, like the the war above Coruscant, like that that shit is super cool and interesting and and arguably grounded. When we start talking about the gods of Mortis imbuing people with power in order to you know fulfill prophecies and move them to, I'm just like okay, like that's that's distinctly less interesting to me. Than the invisible hand is trying to, you know, escape the battle with Palpatine as captured, but they're also trying to force Anakin into a position where he may have to make a choice that could lead him down to the dark side. That stuff's way more interesting to me. Uh, Ryan, someone yes. said that Anakin never stabbed the sun. He did. He stabbed the sun. Well, I don't. Fought. But didn't he just kill him with his lightsaber? Did he actually yeah. use the blade of Mortis? That's always been like a theory, like right about the sun out there. No, he didn't use the blade. You're right. Um, because I think I talked about that at one point in uh God, he did some fucking video about I, I went on some rant on something in Ahsoka about potentially the sun or some manifestation of the sun popping up in something. And I think I brought that up. Let me see if I can uh Probably Ahsoka, dude. He's, just, he's probably just going to come back in season two. Yeah, like his, because he like he ain't killed forever. They just used a lightsaber, so uh, then he'll be back, and maybe the dagger of Mortis will be somewhere, and Ahsoka will have to find it and end him for real. So she but, does, yeah. So Ray does stuff that Luke can't do, and Ahsoka does stuff that Anakin can't do. That's how right. But there, there was sort of like I remember there was like a Horcrux thing. I connected it to Harry Potter because like I remember the father severed his tie or whatever by killing himself mm -hmm. so that's how the son was able to be wounded by anakin's blade so the father stabbed himself with the dagger then anakin stabbed the son so it's like well technically he should be dead but on a technicality they could always not I guess we'll find out on Ahsoka season two. I guess we will. And, and this is why. And this is why I don't really like the Mortis arc. It's like so much of it is, and even when they come back, the implication is that they all like took part in this shared interdimensional thing that happened, and they're like questioning: Was that real? Was it a dream? Whatever. Um, and I, again, <laughs> after after that happened, <coughs> Star Wars, Kenny. That's good. <laughs> After that happened, what they tried to do in the expanded universe, and that's how we ended up with the Abelot thing, was they bounced off Mortis, they took what they did in Mortis, and they did a, a little play off that, be like, okay, there's a father, a son, and a daughter, mm -hmm. where, you know, was there ever a mother? And they tried to do this Abelot thing, somebody who wanted right. to be a mother but was not, um, and, you know, ended up becoming this dark fucking force being Just that Luke has to team up with people to destroy. Yeah. Where do you guys hope this goes? What? Ahsoka? Mortis. Into another power dynamic. I, I hope it's not Thrawn that's the freaking, uh, the big bad, because he's honestly been written out to be like an idiot. So I, I don't know what I hope comes out of all of this, but what I fear comes out of all of it, again, is, is just what I said that um ah ahsoka continues to like up and up and up her like power level uh to being th this is what i could see happening potentially what if the intention was for balin to become uh essentially the representation of the son and ahsoka is the representation of the daughter and like they they end up kind of they're the ones that are battling it out for the good of the fucking galaxy i, I don't know Ryan just wants every Star Wars character to die. Eventually, yes. Um, <laughs> I like nice absolutely. Some of them could die. <laughs> the ones I don't like, I wish could die. I agree with that. Um, but Ahsoka, to me, I've talked about this a long time. I think that 
Ahsoka living through the original trilogy is kind of like really stupid. And the idea that the first scene that we get between her and Luke Skywalker is not like Luke telling her about what happened with Anakin at the end and her like sharing experiences like is wild to me. Because if you're going to keep her alive, if you're going to oh, have yeah. her part of this, that is such a missed opportunity. That is the one thing that you know, a lot of Ahsoka lovers, they wanted to see so much what happens when she meets Luke and realizes that Anakin at the end redeemed himself after all of that stuff. That could be a very powerful moment for people that care so much about that character and the journey. And instead, yeah. we just see this little like one-off two-minute scene of her in Book of yeah. Boba Fett. Wild. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I was really hoping that we would be able to see her and Luke talk and Anakin show up and then they're always like, oh my god, like, <laughs> hey dad. <laughs> it was Master. funny um, for us on, on EFAP when we saw that episode, we were like, isn't that the girl from like all of the Clone Wars and knows Vader and how come their conversation was so stilted and weird? That you know, we had comments being filled with things like, "What the fuck was that conversation? Where was where was everything between Luke and blah blah?" We were just like, "Oh shit, this is way worse than we even we realized." Yeah, I was hoping that their first interaction that we'd see on the screen would be between them They're never having right. met before. Yeah. yeah, maybe them coming. Like, I made a comic for join members. I made a few pages of a comic a few years ago, and it was essentially them just meeting for the first time. And like that well, thing is, sick. as far as I'm concerned, we have not seen Luke since Return of the Jedi whatsoever. Yeah, no, we haven't. We have not. Saruman. I'm going to do a plug for a couple seconds here. Mm. Um, well, all right. <laughs> guys, plug. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to get your sabers, now is the last chance between uh, the, I think it's the 25th when the manufacturers go on holidays. So you won't be getting your saber out till at least February 25th. But if you get it in before then, then you'll be able to grab one. So these are all NeoPixel, very high quality sabers. Very, very nice. I really like them. All smooth swing and they have everything that you would want. So go check them out at theorysavers.com. Um, one question. If you stab someone in the stomach with one, will they survive? Yeah. Authentic then. Ooh, awesome. Yeah. Nice. Especially if you use the uh the Annie Saber. There you go. Uh -huh. I like it. Uh -huh. Someone says, Do you have a Dooku saber? Uh yeah, so I'm actually working on a major website right now, just insanely expensive and takes a lot of time but uh it's going to be a massive store front on there and you guys will see that probably in the next couple of months it's being built every day it's being worked on the dooku hilt is my favorite i think it's uh it's pretty bitching so i yep. love um i did you read the darth bane trilogy theory i did so it's one of my favorites second book is very rushed clearly but one of the really cool things they do in that book is drew Carpishin, who obviously um, you know, architect of a lot of KOTOR shit. Um, yeah. Got really into detail when it came to lightsaber combat and force techniques specifically for battle yes. and things. And um, Bane gets given a... Bane gets given. Bane receives a curved hilt lightsaber from the person who's teaching at the Sith Temple. And mm -hmm. it really goes into detail about how he's able to use it to manipulate and enhance his strength and things like that throughout his combat i just find it really cool so yeah. it, it kind of makes you rethink what dooku's able to do and how he's able to manipulate it that way well it, it was written i forgot which book it was written in but it, it literally said that his curved hilt allows him to emphasize more power on the downswing or something like that and to like spin it it, it was it wrote it nicely i, I forget exactly how it was written that but yeah there's like literal spec reasons why they designed it that certain way for the character it's cool love yeah. stuff like that darth bane trilogy for anybody that uh that hasn't read it highly recommend um takes place a thousand years before the ot and explains the uh the beginning of the rule of two curve tilt is a hack but it's harder it's harder to use so you got to be really good and he was so cool looking with it that's what matters 
I guess we should start reading soupies. I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm I haven't been sleeping much the last few days. I've just been like working like crazy and keeping up with the sales. And uh, then I've been sick and traveling. So I'm just kind of my conversations. I'm a little brain dead, to be honest. So uh, thanks for carrying the conversation, guys. He did it again. He retconned another person's work. Ventures died, and now she's alive. <laughs> That's something that I've heard people talking about. So, do you guys want to give me some context? She's she's in the trailer, but you're happy to see her, or I'm happy to see her. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm not. If it actually is a retcon, so there is a statement out. All right, Ventress dies in a book, Dark Disciple. She dies in that book. Uh, it's a new canon book. You know, it's supposed to all fit in. She appears in the Bad Batch season three trailer. She should be dead at this point. There's some speculation. People are saying, well, maybe it's a flashback. There's a statement on StarWars.com about, hey, we're after she apparently perished, they're happy to announce that this is going to go in line with the events of Dark Disciple. So some people are saying, well, that means clearly that she's dead and it's just going to be a flashback. And some people are saying, well, the way they phrase that sounds like it's another retcon. Yeah, I think it's a retcon the way they phrased it. Why would they say apparently? Doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, they would only say that if they were getting ready for you to understand that she's no longer dead. Literally, apparently. It's like, well, she full on died. She got electrocuted by Count Dooku and like got roasted. Apparently. Apparently. I mean, a lot of people are saying they, they intend to align it with that book, so... Right, that's what they said. Said, um, let me pull up that statement. Hold on. Interesting. Um, I'm a Dave guy, but Dark Disciple was a great book. Makes me not want to read the books anymore because they could have a huge waste of time. You had this to New Dawn book as well. And that was Perfect. the first, that was the Rebels book, right? The first, like one of the first books you got published, yeah. Did it have hair on the cover? I can't remember. I yeah. think it has, um, I think it has Kanan and Hera, um, on the cover. That, that was like to me, I think that was one of the first books that they published. I mean, again, it would have been with when Rebels was about to come out or did come out. I didn't read that one. Did you? I don't think I read it. No, New Disney, I don't think I was going to read that. I did read um, uh, Tarkin because yep. Tarkin was in the works before they made the decision that they weren't going to do EU stuff, and they ended up changing a bunch of things. But I, I kind of wanted to see what the what the bones of it were. I did the uh, Audible. There you it was go. Dope. Yeah, so perhaps Ventress will end up screwing up the Empire's plans, and Vader will have to come in to fight her. Well, well maybe wouldn't be much of a fight. Well, you never know. Yeah, you remember him against Seer? Oh my God! Everything, and that's yeah, exactly. That to me, I, I talked about that as well. I'm really tired of seeing people fight Vader and escape. Yeah, or like beat the shit out of him, and he like yeah. narrowly beat. Like, fuck off! This is Vader. Stop it. Yeah, or like, oh man, it ended in a draw. They were able to get away. Or wow, she really went toe to toe with Vader before finally losing. It's like, no, she didn't. She couldn't. No man could. No woman could. It just doesn't. Don't even make it about gender. It's, it's no being alien. Whatever could. The what I did. I liked how they did it. In you can only do it so many times. But in the first Jedi, uh, Jedi Knight game, uh, Jedi Survivor. Is that the first one? No, Fallen Order, Fallen Order. Mm -hmm. In Fallen Order, um, where as soon as you realize Vader's coming for you, it's like Cal's just running. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I forget yeah. that moment of time and she gets like yeeted. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cal's just running, like straight up, I am running for my life. But you can yeah. only like do that shit so much. I know. Do you think they'll make a Ventress show or movie? Probably not. Can't Disney Plus. Hey, what's up, dude? He goes with Dark Decept storyline, Star Wars confirmed it. It's just that apparently part throws me off. Yeah, like why would they say that? Like, why would you say apparently perished? 
in and this is not screen this is not comic book movie this is starwars.com i'm going to see if i can find that article maybe they don't want to maybe they don't want to spoil the book <laughs> and why would you say apparently perished i don't know it could the theory could be right they use that language because they're kind of idiotic and they're like we'll say apparently so we're not confirming anything even though so no one can be like you spoiled the book for us wait Mahler, what'd you send me is that a link what is this hmm oh in the private chat or whatever that was just about the soaker and stuff oh got it got it what cool yes um when he's doing canon what he did to legends bring back characters that died is lazy annoying Can how be. good is d i haven't read it it was a good book it's quinlan asajj dooku if we get ventress do we get boss see that'd be nice but maybe in the future if ventress can come back ahsoka can come back and the emperor can come back then why can't luke come back because he can't Fucking be careful what you wish for as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 15 episodes their season finale will air may 1st can't wait for theories watch parties oh wow it's 15 episodes that's crazy well uh no because there's three episodes the first night so the episode premiere yeah so it's mm -hmm. gonna be like 12 weeks so that means uh march april wait will i have yeah. to watch them then to step to date, or oh, that really makes sense because I have to see the first two, and then you're gonna want me to see Rebels, and you want me to see Clone Wars. Yeah, you gotta watch Clone. You gotta watch all seven seasons of Clone Wars. You gotta watch all four seasons of Rebels. Then you gotta watch two seasons of Bad Batch, and then you need to catch up, Mahler. So hurry the fuck up. Thanks. I got till May first to do that. Yes, we'll give you to May fourth. Oh. Uh, Jodie Foster admitted she was off to play Leia. That would make Han a big perv for hitting on a 14 year old. When we look at Padme with, um, look at Padme yeah. with, uh, Anakin. It's true. It wasn't hitting on him. You could feel trying to fuel fan arguments because they have no creative ideas on how to best further the story, but they know how to say something. So they fuel the divide to keep fans on that and keep fans talking about that side of Star Wars. It's so dumb. Hmm. I mean, there's a lot of. I feel like we just try and search for anything that can make any of this make sense from like a better point of view sometimes. And I don't know, man. Sometimes I don't know. It's it's not. And I was talking to it. The stuff I, you guys know, I hung out with Nick Gillard just a few days ago, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we were talking on the phone too last night. Uh, it was two nights ago, and it's just the the amount of difference between star wars now and when george was involved is, is quite drastic and i you know in response to this comment i really think that it's not even so much that they're trying to divide a fan base i just don't think they really know what they're doing right? it, it comes down to just ignorance to be honest we can find clip after clip and interview after interview of george shitting all over traditional hollywood studios yeah right for like the way they've done business Mm -hmm. And, you know, then he sold Star Wars to Disney with the, you know, implication that he, he might have thought they were going to treat it a little bit differently than they did. Mm -hmm. um, but the truth is now it's uh, like, it's, you know, it's like every other one of these big studios. George obviously. wouldn't even have need to have seen the sequels to have known that they've gone in a completely different direction. Just look at the culture, look at the fan reactions. Be like, Whoa, what the fuck happened? And Absolutely. that's the guy who made the prequels who at, up to that point were famously known as being like the divisive Star Wars films. But now... They've been completely dethroned for that uh, aspect. Yeah. And I, I really don't know what the future is, like what it's going to be like for them. I, I think when you look at the pre reaction of the prequels versus the reaction of the sequels, um, I, you know, I'm someone who loved the prequels, obviously. I understand some people didn't like them, but the, you can kind of understand how people can have a lot of preconceived notions about what the story was, right? About how we got to this point when you know the end point it's way easier to talk and like pretty definitively about how how you get there and when you see something that you don't think like that didn't align with what you thought it would be you can maybe be a little upset or whatever with the sequels with after when there's no end point i feel like there's so many infinite possibilities in people's heads when you go out there see how the story of star wars could have continued 
that there shouldn't be as much inherent vitriol from people that thought there was this fixed point and it only makes so much sense for these things to happen. So the outrage we saw for the sequels was to me far bigger than a lot of stuff we saw for the prequels with less reason mm -hmm. to be so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There was just a comment in the chat that said George is rolling in his grave. See what Disney has done. <laughs> he's not dead. He's not. He's not dead. <laughs> assholes. He's alive. Bro, I I saw a clip of him from a couple months ago. Man, it looks sad. Um, well, I mean, he's getting on. He's nearly yeah. eighty now, right? Yeah, he's getting old, and he's not in like the best shape. But it just he like got out of a car and he was like walking into like something. And it's like security, yeah. like there was obviously fans all around who wanted autographs or whatever. And his security is like, you know, don't crowd him, don't crowd him, don't crowd him. And he just looked, he was walking so gingerly. And I'm like, man, he's getting old. It sucks. Yeah. So me and Nick were talking about, actually Nick brought it up. I didn't, there was a shit, shit ton I didn't get on camera, but yeah. <clears throat> yeah. He's getting old. So it's sad. If women were fans of Star Wars, who, which which other Star Wars actors are going to be at MegaCon? Do we know? I mean, it's Gina. It's going to be like the Clone Wars, Ashley Eckstein, Matt Lanter, uh, James Arnold Taylor. Mm -hmm. who else? Who else? Um, so I think that you and Hayden. I, I think a lot of the Mandalorian people are going to be there, minus mm. Pedro, obviously. But um, so I, I guess I don't know if Tamara Morrison's going to be there. Um, oh, wow, may, that'd be cool. He he may be. I, I don't know. There, there's a massive guest list, but I'm pretty sure uh, Giancarlo Esposito is going to be there. Oh, wow. Uh, Katie Sackhoff, is, is Katie going to be there? I, I don't want to say for sure, but they've also got some Ahsoka people there. I know uh, Ezra is there. Um, mm, that's cool. He seems Amon, like a nice guy. I, I don't care much for him. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't care much for um, Ezra in terms of his character. In fact, I care more about his character in live action than I did in animated, I think. And I think, uh, okay. yeah, he, he minds just a better, for some reason, it just hits better. For some reason. Don't know why. If women were fans of Star Wars since the 70s, then they should be okay with the already massive female representation and presence in the stories. I don't know, dude. Just don't, don't ask me that shit. <laughs> anything I say just good. Any, anything I don't say gets turned into something. What don't anything I do say? Um, thanks, Kaido. Onwards and upwards, man. Don't worry about the haters. Let them hate. It will be their undoing, and karma will deal with. The... Oh, yeah, man. I don't even. I pay no mind, dude. I have a very iron mind. It doesn't. These things don't bother me. Whenever there is a, the only thing that bothers me is how much I actually love and appreciate women. And I don't want anyone to ever try and insinuate that I don't. And that's probably the only thing that actually bugs me. Um, and from interviewing someone on my like psychology relationship channel, and she says women don't like Star Wars to be skewed into me saying women don't have a place in Star Wars. I think it's just asinine. I think it's slander. I think it's bullshit. And I don't stand for it. I don't agree with it. So you know, if anyone wants to write articles about me and say that that's who I am and what I am, then fuck, that's on them. I, I'm not here to change the world. I know who I am. So, and, and the people who know me know who I am. Yeah, when I saw those articles, I was like really excited. I'm like, he joined the club. Yes. But then you mm -hmm. had to clarify things. I'm like, well, well whatever. <laughs> well, it's lonely. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like Mahler said, I'm making my way up the ranks in the ists. Yeah, collect them. You'll work your way to the phobes eventually. I'm like maybe the, one day. The sexism king and Ryan's the racist king. You got to come to our thrones and collect like a little, little token, and then move on it's to the like, next level. Uh, it's like it's like um, Thanos. You got to collect all the stones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whenever there's a full new Star Wars content, you guys should review old non-Star Wars Lucasfilm productions. That's actually a lot. We desperately need a Howard the Duck review. Oh, okay. Sure. If you can want to like, can you do like Indiana Jones or something, <laughs> please? <laughs> you don't want to do How the Duck? All right, man. Okay. It's your opinion, I guess. 
organized chaos and synthetic man who are these who are these people oh my god if you got those two together that would actually be pretty hilarious so they're uh who are, who are let's they just, let's just say they're about as crazy as each other on both sides of the spectrum I, uh, where are they right now youtubers but both like insane oh send them the link <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, dude, send them the link right now. Uh chat, get go notify them right now. And if they're down, we'll send what? them the link right now. Go <laughs> hound them down. Get them on, on I don't even no, know if I, either of them care about Star Wars like at all. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> those, those, Star Wars people. No, they're not they're, they're literally just people that hate me and Mauler. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh fuck. Okay. I thought you got yeah. I thought they were like Star Wars people. Like one hates Ray, the other one loves Ray. I think organized chaos pretends to like Star Wars. They might be that, but uh, yeah. I don't oh know. shit! We should have led with that. Okay. Well, no, they just like I, I don't know synthetic man. I don't know who that is. I've heard the organized <laughs> chaos guy. Synthetic, synthetic man. That's what yeah. Some of those people send me like this guy called you this. I'm like shocker, but get in line. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Take a number. Take a number. Oh, someone just had a good suggestion. Get Grace Randolph on the stream. I'd be up for that. Sure. Yeah. Hey. Uh, Talk to Grace about Star Wars. And that's a yeah. woman as well. So you'll be all uncomfortable and afraid. All I got to do is show up and people will feel the words for me. The thing is, I think people hate her more than you. So. Do they? Maybe. I, I, get well, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I don't know. I, there's, honestly, I feel like I have some, whenever this, this shit happens, it's not publicized, but the amount of love that I get in DMs is absolutely ridiculous. It's, so well, it's kind of, um, nice. It's kind of a, an unfortunate feedback loop of the way this whole thing works is that it encourages you to uh, not be like to be bubbled or somewhat because because uh, I, I think you as well as the uh, I and, and, and the others we like to try and find alternative points of view, but mm -hmm. the like when you're dealing with a whole crowd of people that literally say stuff to you that's that you're just like whoa that's the complete opposite of me though, and then you got a different crowd of people who know you. Like, well, I'm going to hang out with a crowd that know me then. Like, I, 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 there's no way I'm going to spend the time with people who just absolutely hate my, hate everything about me. And then that can, like, develop bubbles, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, no, I know the, I know what you mean about the bubble thing. But it, for me, I just, um, I don't know, I've always, I just speak my mind and uh, it always gets turned into some sort of thing. And people just believe other people who talk about me. He said this, he said that. It's like, well, why don't you just ask me? Why don't you just talk to me and you'll see for yourself. That that's not the case, but <laughs> it's not how the game thing. is played. It it's so much more lucrative for people to come up with a story or, or a rhetoric about me than to just be like, "Hey, well, yeah. what do you mean by this? Did it's you actually know mean women don't like Star Wars?" And I, like, I never even said that. I never said anything. I I literally, literally. I mean, if it were two women in that, if I was a woman. And Sadia said that, and she did. I, I, as a woman, did the same reaction. I'm like, oh my god, nobody would bat an eye. But because it's me, it's all of a sudden now. I'm saying women don't have a place in Star Wars. It is so unbelievably. It, it's not even nonsensical. It's just like you're. Is this like a fairy tale land? Like it doesn't even make sense. I could understand if like I said something. I didn't even say anything. So it's it's well, so strange. Part of it, though, right? Like, and I assume this could be applied to us with maybe Disney or something. But everyone is much more unified and clear on when they have villains or uh, people. They can sort of just be like, "Yo, there's nothing redeemable about this creature," and we can all be unified in taking it down. Um, mm -hmm. It's too. If if you were a, a person with with like dimensions and different ideas and stuff, that gets too complicated and weird, and we don't like that. No, 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 no. He's just a monster. That's much easier. Yeah, but no one really ever takes the time to just like actually talk to me. They just like to throw insults or make fun or whatever. So it's fine. I oh I've, yeah, I've seen it, it, dude. But it, I see it for all of us, honestly. I was telling Drinker about this. I saw a thread that was so fucking funny. It was um, uh, can anyone catch me up on what is wrong about Mauler and Critical Drinker? Like that was like the thread title, and in two of the top comments were, "Well, Mauler is friends with Critical Drinker." Then underneath that it was Critical Drinker is friends with Mauler. So. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> what, 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 it's just perpetual at that point then yeah it's pretty win. circular why <laughs> why what's wrong with these guys they're friends with each other got it yeah that's the problem and then well now that we're all friends it's like 
you know, just adds well, to that, the Well, that'll be the big old triangle. It's like, do you know that Mola speaks it, it, to it, Ryan? It, Ryan speaks to Theory. Theory speaks to Mola. And we'll fucking reverse that, whatever. It's just like, yeah, that's enough. The triangle the of thing, misogyny. I've seen people point this out. It feels like a new phenomenon. They'll do that, and then someone underneath will be like, oh, and also they, and then makes up really crazy shit. And then someone underneath that will be like, oh, I always felt like I knew that about them. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, oh, I, you know, I used to watch them. But oh, I'm so glad I got out of that phase of my life. I was just an angry person, but now, yeah. now I'm enlightened and I don't have to deal with this. It. Like, oh, good for you. Please. The entire premise of how that thread started, though, it's like someone who doesn't know, they're like, hey, can somebody tell me what's wrong with all these people? Like, who has no idea about who you are, right? Right. Can somebody yeah. tell me what's wrong and why I'm not supposed to like them? Yeah. Wild. And then this, well, 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 Ryan's racist. He hates black people. He didn't Mahler, like the I, Batman. It's like, what, 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 what do they say about Mahler? I don't even know what they say about you. Guys, but this all kind of, the main thing that gets said about me is who I, who I talk to. That's the, that's the primary thing. It's always a fucking laundry list because I like talking to all kinds of people. Right, like, yeah, you, I get that did you hear he talked to this? But, and you're, I was going to say, you're the next one on my list, but that I'm also on your list now. As someone yeah, we're, we're on each other's list, right. Yeah, no, I, I'm... Yeah, I don't even know what I, 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 I'm more like a chameleon. So there's like a new thing every week and then it dies down and I'm like, oh, cool. Not on the main, not on the main news. Maybe I need to do something to <laughs> fire up the analytics a little bit. It's so uh, weird. I never get shit for anybody I talk to. Usually it's just other people that get shit for talking to me. <laughs> yeah, you're bomb of the barrel there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really I'm, get any lower I'm like than right. I'm patient zero. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally, literally. I see uh, that Ministry like... of Wrong Think mentioned Pharaoh let my whammon go. Um, I have something here. I could put my Pharaoh hat on if you guys want. That would be great. That's well, your buddy, Mo. Gay actor Michael Douglas. Mm -hmm. I grew up with female characters, Ray is the worst example. Star Wars Theory, I'm not a YouTuber, but having a chat with you would be an honor. Oh, yeah, anytime, dude. See, you can't try to say I'm racist. I love that. You're, ra you're racist now. <laughs> Did you know I'm part Egyptian? Cool. I don't take offense to it. Why would you? <laughs> I'm That's what I'm people. saying. That's what I'm, I'm fucking... you. you didn't even get the joke. You guys are becoming too woke and wokenized. Well, no, but we would we were in on it. That was that was, Ryan was definitely Ryan's never not fucking joking. <laughs> this whole thing. <laughs> I wish other people would get that, you know, instead of uh, taking everything at face value. But yeah, um, I, I I control like the Pharaoh controls if women are allowed to be fans of Star Wars or not. So we'll see by the end of the stream what I think. And what do you think so far? Do they have a place? Pretty 50 50, to be honest, based on what I've seen. Jeez. Maybe one day. Uh, have a great week, fellas. May the force be with you, especially during the unfortunate drama for Barely Alive news articles. Oh, yes. Freddie Prince Jr. is a dope. Oh, yeah, I'm not a fan of him. He's so angry, those clips, that he says those things. You're just like, what the fuck? You can't be that angry and that wrong. <laughs> my, my favorite part is, my, my favorite part of that is, Dave Filoni taught me everything about Star Wars, and he got taught everything by George Lucas. So there. That's yeah. literally his argument, and then he proceeds to just spout bullshit. Yeah, yeah it's like, dude, you're you got a pretty cool life. You're a good looking guy. You got a cool wife. You got literally Buffy as your wife. Like, why are you such a fucking depressed dick? What's wrong with you? You're so angry. It's weird. Yeah. I just don't like it when people purport that absolute nonsense about uh you're just upset that the Millennium Falcon is giving to a girl. Well, no, dude, you can't say those things. It's, it's just ridiculous bullshit. So this set of Super Chat seems to be about uh, would Luke really have gone to the dark side if he had just killed the Emperor? Um, Probably not. The, I mean, the thing about it is like, you just, it really depends on the individual of like how you interpret the scene, I suppose, but that the implication I got was that he was teetering on enjoying the power. That's what like Re Re Return of the Jedi covers a lot right even from the beginning luke is um experiencing a lot of of a power burst and we're not sure exactly where he's tapping it from a lot of it seems to be frustration anger bitterness maybe and that he overcomes that sense near the end there and uh mm -hmm. the emperor's like for fuck's sake 
I knew we got that. <laughs> and and that's why it's that's why it's so unique, right? It's not this well. Do the ends justify the means? It's why are you taking these actions? Not the action you're taking. It's why are you taking these actions? If you're doing it out of selflessness or out of like defense or out of because of necessity, okay. But if you're doing it for revenge or to be cruel or whatever, that same action can have very, like very different ramifications. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, 310, if Palpy got out a lightsaber and attacked him, is Luke allowed to kill Palpy in self-defense? You know, anger. Yes, but only if he is all the Jedi. You guys rock. Keep on being your best selves. I'm so pumped. Mahler will be watching 2003 Clone Wars. Could Theory hop on EFAP minis for it? Yeah, God. anytime. So many things we get. We're editing that I would probably just I'll watch it and then we talk on Stargrift about it. Is probably going to be the stuff we make. Yeah, and then he can clip that. Um, yeah, I mean I'm home in a couple weeks, so then we could. Uh, unless I, I should I should be, but um, oh, it's open ended. If either way, I'll just yeah, it's all good. Just watch, just watch it. Uh, though Palpy is going to murder tons of people, killing him while he isn't currently holding a weapon attacking Luke means Luke would lose free will. It's just in that moment, that's what Palpatine is commenting on is Luke's state of mind and what he's uh, what's behind him as to why he's making a, the decision. I mean, he does go to swing for him, right? And Vader's uh, puts his life in a different yeah. place. but then people are saying, Oh, he was trying to save, and you know what? The stupid book, uh, which one was it? Goes in and like changes some shit around with the Return of the Jedi, which really bugged me. Is this like from a certain point that. of view? I think it is. I hate those ones. That's the same one it where is. it made Luke like gay, like, where it made Luke attractive. Where? Um, in in the Empire Strikes Back one. Where? What? Yeah, yeah. Because I know Obi Wan's gay now, but I didn't know Luke was gay what? too. When Empire, was he gay? Empire Strikes Back from a certain Obi point of view. Obi Wan's gay. It's these stories about so the, from a certain point of view stories are these stories from like different random characters um, that takes place like a guy that walked by Han and Leia arguing at, at, like in the hallway at Hoth right and like went in between them. It's like what about this guy's you know a five minute story about his life and there's okay, one where Luke is attracted to some fucking some random dude. Let's see if I can find it. Really. So yeah, there are those stupid ass ones where it's like random Joe Blow off the street walks by Java's stool sample <laughs> in the gutter of Tatooine or something, and like we'd get a story about his life. But then it's also dope ass stuff. Like there was one narrated said by Sam Witwer, which I really liked, regarding um, Vader having a dream about him as Anakin with Luke killing the Emperor, and then he wakes up. Like I, that that was like such a dope fan fiction. So sometimes they do have really cool stories in there. Other times it's just pretty pointless, nonsensical stuff. Uh, there was another one where it was a cute little tidbit where it was, you know, the, the blanket that Yoda has when he dies is Qui-Gon Jinn's rope. That's nice. Hey, Ryan, question from chat. Why do you watch Star Wars when you clearly don't enjoy it? Well, what have I said that I don't enjoy? That I, I hate exist those kind of comments. Because, I, Ryan, let, let, me, let, me, let me just interject here for you. Yeah, like I fucking hate those because it's like we love Star Wars so much that we are angry at the perversion that has become Star Wars in certain episodes, shows, movies, media, books, whatever it might be. And especially when they're the dumbass comments like Charmin saying this time a woman shaped Star Wars. I think it's it's just showing that things are being so changed from what it once was, which was primarily actually not even primarily literally the only thing about it was telling good stories that was fucking it there was nothing else right but now it's all about it's time a woman shaped star wars it's a, fuck off like i swear to god if i were to come on and say it's time a man shaped star wars forget canceled i, I wouldn't even have a youtube channel youtube would take me out you know, but but it's it's totally acceptable, and this is what I don't get about this about, about the equality, which I'm all in favor of. That everything is okay for a woman to say, but if a man were to say it, it's completely irreversible and it's not acceptable. And that I think is the problem that we have in society, where if one thing is wrong, it needs to be wrong. You can't say these things. 
the fuck? Especially when it comes to Star Wars. Let's just talk about a good story. Let's just make a good story. I don't care who you are as a director. I had this conversation with Nick. He thinks it's absolute bullshit. That guy's the most old school son of a gun I've ever met. It's super ridiculous. And I hope that one day we can all agree on that, that we need to tell good stories with Star Wars and not focus so much about the gender of who's telling these stories. So for, for me, really the only thing that I really don't like from Star Wars before Disney bought it is the Clone Wars. I, 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 love, I love the six yeah. Star Wars movies. Um, I love probably 80, about 80% probably of the expanded universe stories that are out there. There's some that are shit. You know, when you have uh, 140, 150 novels, whatever the hell you're talking about, not all of them are going to be bangers. Not all the storylines are going to be bangers. There's certainly some ones that suck. Um, but for the most part, I love almost all of it. Um, the vast majority of the video games that were published by LucasArts, I really enjoy. So, you know, it, it hasn't been until, to me, Clone Wars, I don't like, that's the, the, the controversial thing about me. I don't like Clone Wars, right? Um, but then all the Disney stuff, there's almost nothing of enjoyment that I've been able to get out of it. So um, if you're talking about Disney Star Wars, I feel like they've taken it. Uh, uh, they've taken something that I loved, like the, the franchise that I love more than anything else. And I think in a large part, they've destroyed it in a lot of ways. So, yeah, of course, I'm not going to like a lot of that. But yeah, um, and, and then to add to it, right, for really other yeah. reasons, uh, part of it, all three of us, partly our job to um watch review and assess this stuff a, a lot of the channels that have been built on it's, it's like keeping track and um i've seen someone use this phrase and i kind of like it. i want to implement it a bit more but great keeping as opposed to gatekeeping mm. uh refers to just like a quality assessment and being like this should be this should be considered and, and supported and celebrated and pushed forward and this shouldn't be and that you do that as someone who's experienced with the ip or uh you know, um, even if it is a uh, a perspective that someone will be like, you're not a professional, you haven't done this, you haven't worked for it, but it's like, oh yeah, but like a lot of people are invested in my perspective, and so I should provide it. It seems that that would be fair. By the way, this is just another reason on top of what Ryan said, on top of what Theory said. I feel like there's, there's, there's a lot that uh, comes together for why we check out the new stuff they produce, even though we may be in a position of expecting not to like it. Um, yeah, we're still waiting for for the projects to come out that we can go. Oh, that was fucking awesome! Yeah, I mean, me too. Uh, so I, I did look it up. By the way, it was not uh, a different point of or uh, a different point of view. It was Luke on the Bright Side, which is a short story published in Stories of Jedi and Sith, and that was the mm. the center of that Wikipedia controversy where they put Luke under the LGBTQIA plus like list. And that was why, because of one story from Sam Maggs in that book, uh, where yeah. it had him basically being trapped. Like, I don't know if like some ice collapsed or something, but it had him being trapped. It was on Hoth, which is why I thought it was from a different point of view or from a certain point of view. But him trapped there with like some random dude um, in a tunnel on Hoth. And then so he has a, a romance with a random dude? He doesn't have a romance. He has like fleeting romantic feelings. It's not like, like he kisses him or like anything. A romance? <laughs> no, like, you know, if we get stuck in here any longer, if we need to stay warm, I might consider fucking that dude in the ass. <laughs> that, that kind of thing. <laughs> now, you just got to read between the lines. All righty, then. Come wait for the <laughs> animated adaptation of that. Uh, there you go. <laughs> well, he's gone. <laughs> He killed it. Imagine right? if imagine if the next Rolling Stone hit piece is about that and they have to put this video together of me wearing this thing. <laughs> and all the comments are like, can you please explain <laughs> why he's wearing and the article's like, I don't actually know why he's wearing that. So I do uh on, on my stream, um on my streams, usually <laughs> that I do every Sunday, I end up clipping like a couple things out and like putting a standalone videos. There was one I did just with this on, and I just went through the whole thing like I was just doing a normal video. I never acknowledged I was wearing it. I never explained it. I just clipped it and put it out, and the comments were wild, dude. You should do that with a bunch of different hats and headdresses or something. Yeah. Look, so for the record, I, I don't... Well, fuck the record. 
I don't care what character, like, again, I don't care what gender they make a character. I don't care what sexual, sexual preference or, or wh whatever. Um, it doesn't matter to me as long as he's a good character. But when they take pre-established characters that are known to be straight or gay or whatever, and they change them, I don't understand the purpose of that. Like Obi-Wan Kenobi. We know he's straight. We know he's been with Satine. He, he's, but all of a sudden he's now bisexual or something. It, it's, I don't understand. It, and if, like, let's say Qui-Gon Jinn was gay. And then they want to make him straight. Why? Why are we doing this? Why is there such a focus on on that? Let's just focus on these characters and how they were pre-established by George. If they're new characters, cool. I, th I think, what was it? Uh, Holdo? I think Holdo is the first gay character, was it? Wow. Star Wars? A great oh, representation. Yeah. Um, I think so. It, so and that's the thing first of all there were gay characters in the expanded universe and have been for years before disney took over yeah um that wasn't the focus of a lot of stories and some of them especially in uh in legacy of the force there's a mandalorian couple they're both dudes and mm. you, you almost like don't even notice it when you're reading because they're not making a big deal out of it they're simply mm -hmm. letting you know that these two dudes are married and have a family whatever right um but to your statement about why do they do it to existing characters, the reality is they do it because if they create an original character, these people are such poor writers that no one will care about that original character. Wow. We've seen that over and over again. So it's not important. So what they do is they take a character that's known, they take a character that has a fan base, and they do they make that change, one, because people will notice, and it'll just get more attention. And then it's like, hey, look at what we have. We have this now. It's almost like they've claimed a scalp, which is like kind of weird. But that, yeah, that's I just, how I, I see it, at least, because I just think it's too difficult for them to create original characters that people actually care about to have authentic representation. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I personally, I'm just of the philosophy that, you know, your your sexual preference and your sexual identity is uh, probably like the last, the least interesting thing about a human being, you know? So it's like, I, I it's none of my business, right? It's it's a private matter. It's it's not my concern and you know same goes for you right so it's like i think we should just judge each other on who we are as people and then when you're coming to writing stories um who cares what they do in their private life well, oftentimes you know? depend on the context of the story being told right like how relevant that will even be but with star wars it's like i just don't right. even see why it's coming up ever well yeah right. like like with lando now he has sex with robots you know it's like yeah that didn't add anything to solo was, like how, okay. how does that help how does that help me? How does it help the character? What, is it, he fucks his robot? Why? Let's you know Why he's you... really horny, in case you didn't notice already when he tries to hit on Leia. Well, yeah. Literally in front of Han. It's like, well, okay. That's like a power play, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, What I got from Re Revenge of the Sith, Palp hid in the light. He knew both the light and the dark side, studied them both while using the light. He remained undetected. No, I don't think so. I, I think that yeah, he clouded everybody with the dark side or whatever, right? He literally clouded the shit out of everybody with his powers. Yeah. Pop Serge. Six out of ten, bro. You got ten? Yeah. I think <laughs> if I like you can... just caught on to that after you've gone through <laughs> literally five of these. There this has I have maybe slept like a few hours the last several days and I have like mucus stuck in my brain i'm like very slow today no, mm. nice so All right. i think if luke had killed palpy right then and there he'd stay the same person i think it's wonky storytelling in a wonky movie so if uh he fights vader and then just chops him into pieces like the what the the attitude and motivations that would require him to go that far would likely have meant that he's like you know started down a path now that would allow him to do it to Palpatine, do it to anybody that ever crossed him or he ever thought was out of line. Like that's that's the concern we have for Luke. Um and him refusing to do that with Vader is an outright like I'm drawing a line. I ain't crossing it sort of thing. It's a very spiritual and character based thing as opposed to a literal like, but killing Vader is good and Palpatine is good because they're bad guys. So it's a bit more than that. Because the, the the prior one said like, well, so Yoda would have gone to the dark side if he had killed Palpatine or Avengers Sith. Like, no, I don't think so. Yoda's like strictly there almost as a you know a, a paladin of like the Jedi order he's coming there to stop big bad man while while Luke on the other hand is still a Jedi in training for the most part right he's still 
We're not entirely sure exactly where his path's going to go. Yoda's like 900 or something. <laughs> he's, he's been, you know, he's been kicking on for a while and everything. I mean, he only learned to talk after he was 500. <laughs> uh, but how the you know, fuck is that going to work out? You're right, and that's one of the things that I actually really liked. Some stuff that they took in the expanded universe in the uh, in the New Jedi Order series, which is a you know a little bit controversial to some people. Star Wars got a little dark then, and some people didn't really like what necessarily happened. One thing I really liked about Luke's arc in that is that. He is so scared of his students falling to the dark side and himself being tempted that he ends up being so he doesn't want to engage unless it's like purely defensive. Right. Because he like remembers those lessons, mm. seeing what the dark side can do to people. And he doesn't want to be the aggressor for fear, not just for himself, but also for all of his students that that they could lead them to be susceptible to falling to the dark side. And you see him really struggle with that. And that's, that's kind of his failure. That's his weakness is that he's so fearful of the dark of his students falling to the dark side. And he kind of has to overcome that and, and be open to like doing what needs to be done and having trust in his students, having trust that he's trained in the right way. And then that's how the kind of rest of that series takes off. So that's what you, to me, that's what you have to do to a character like Luke is you take those things that are like, we've seen play out that are his inherent strengths and, tweak that into you can see how that might become a weakness if he's too unwilling to to come to battle and waits too long and uh instead what we got was you know dude who was sitting there thinking about slashing his nephew um yeah. in his sleep no um, to be fair i've done that with family members of bad dreams yeah of course people are like well you know he didn't actually do it well he was but he was standing there thinking about it he was thinking about it this, this, well, and he was ashamed of having thought about it, and Kylo reacted to the act of it of trying to kill him. So, the the idea that this is some chill moment of you know a casual thought is it ain't. Um. Oh, what a mess that moment was. That's probably where Star Wars died, wasn't it? That scene. I saw somebody say, "How did uh, Ray get pregnant with Kylo's Force baby?" I actually have a. Listen, if, if Lucasfilm's listening, if you're still working on the script for the Ray movie, I have something I think could be very compelling. I want Kylo to have impregnated Ray Skywalker. Um, you know, force impregnated her, life force is a baby growing in there. But because Ray's so broken up about everything that happened, she seeks comfort in the arms of Finn immediately in the aftermath of Ben Solo dying. And they have sex. So she's actually has twins. One of them is black and one of them is white. One of them is Finn's baby. The other is Kylo's baby. And really, this is a story about how them as brothers with different skin color get together and save the galaxy. So the I will approve the story if they can have a false battle in the womb. Ooh, there you go. I'd love that. <laughs> that I, I, that's my pitch. Do it. Come on. I want to see it. Great time to walk in. Molo will probably have a big of Hey, Dave. Uh... Ryan, I, I'm, <laughs> Ryan, I'm really looking forward to it. To hanging with you, man, in a couple weeks here. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, dude. Have yeah, you gone. yeah, yeah. It's gonna be good to see you. Who else is coming? Gary, drinker, Criti critical drinker. Critical drinker is gonna be there. Gary's gonna be there. Some of his crew, so like Exer Girl and Quarter Black Garrett, will be there. Um, obviously, you know Jay's gonna be there. Um, yeah, we're supposed to hang out. We're supposed mm -hmm. to go to Disneyland, Disney World. Uh, X Ray's gonna, X Ray Girl's gonna be there. Yeah, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I think I think Disbrew's coming. I don't know when he's gonna be there, but yeah, Disbrew's coming over at some point. Who? Disbrew, he's a he's a British oh. creator. He oh, cool. British. Mm -hmm. Um, on this note, by the way, about Dave, I'm curious if I wouldn't have to do a single thing. I have a feeling Dave's gonna ruin his own reputation in the next few years. It's gonna crash. And I disagree. Oh well, you know what? Pin it, everybody. <laughs> Check back in three years' time or so. Correct in three years' time. Well, should, we, should, I, we put some, should we put a bet on it? What do we bet? Easy, yeah. Uh, so the right. bet to be absolutely crystal clear is that you are going to think less of him as an artist uh, okay. after his next, like, however many Star Wars projects. To be fair, I don't want to put, like, three years on it just in case he releases nothing in three years. Then I would be like, oh, well, that fucking makes sense. So, well, whatever. It's his, his movie, let's say. Yeah, after his movie. Okay. Alrighty. How much you want to put on it? Wait, Ryan, where would you fall on that? 
Yeah. I've had the lowest opinion of Dave Filoni literally since 2008. So yeah, he hates I, Dave. I, I, when I, Ooh, yeah, but other people, what does he think? Oh, hundred percent. I can tell you when <laughs> I first came on YouTube in 2019 is when I started my channel. Whenever I used to criticize Dave Filoni, I would get so much pushback from people. Those are like usually my worst, like the worst feedback was when I was saying what I felt about someone like Dave Filoni. Four years later, completely different story. There's still some people that certainly are going to, that certainly defend him. But I, now that we've seen the scope of his work outside of cartoons, and I think it's getting exposed to a larger audience, you have a much different perspective coming from people. And I can tell you that his reputation has decreased significantly over the past four years because more people now are familiar with his work. That, that's to me, yeah. that's like the bottom line is more people have seen it. Right. I can see that. Well, uh, people are like, you didn't even bet. You didn't even put up anything. I was like, I saw someone suggest we could put like a saber on the line. I'll, uh, I'll buy another one if, if I lose. In yeah, three uh, fucking years. Well, if well, if well, you well, lose, uh, you got to buy me a saber. Well, I bought an Annie episode three. Thank you, Mahler. Appreciate that. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, well, the Dark you're Apprentice gonna, one, you're, right? You're, you're good. What? No, you... Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I got that one. I didn't get the Shadow one. You didn't get any three? No, no. I got Dark Apprentice. Oh, that one's sick. It is sick. Yes. It's got the crystal inside, which will glows. So in... in oh, yeah, whenever he releases his Mando movie, we'll ask if your opinion of him has gone up or down. And if it's down... Then uh, I get to have a Count Dooku lightsaber. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You okay? You buy one or I send you one. All right. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I have to remind us of this when the matter really comes years. out. What's that? I could be dead in three years. Uh, Don't you hate that, to die, Ryan? <laughs> It'll be fine. My It'll hate be will right. my hate will sustain me, just like exactly. Maul. Yeah, your fucking Pharaoh hat will. Except I have an asshole and can poop. So <laughs> it makes more sense for me to stay alive than him. Uh, I highly doubt Luke would be weak enough to let the killing of the most evil man in the galaxy dramatically change his life. It's kind of like um, looking at the reverse direction. Not to keep talking about this, <laughs> but uh, you're seeing it as like killing Palpatine. Why would that make a person evil? It's like, it's not really about that. It's, it's Luke's motive to commit to the action. I think Ryan was saying that earlier as well. Yeah. Was and it backwards even... the whole time? That's fucking backwards the whole time. Oh no! I was just—I was just uh, adjusting. Because I never noticed the snake. I just see the snake now. Yeah, oh, it's, it's gorgeous. Freaking cobra. Things cool. Are you going to bring it with? You? Are you in Florida? Yeah, I'm in oh, Orlando. Shit. Oh, okay. In Orlando no. right now. So cool. Nice. And, and then, like to this comment, yeah, of course people could be. We, we literally see you know five minutes after it. Well, ten minutes, twenty minutes, whatever. We see Vader redeemed, but. It's not about that. It's, I also it's think about that the active. Go ahead. Per person, everyone is different in terms of their susceptibility to like light and dark. I don't think it's like the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, there are some people who are just like stalwart, and then some people who are like really shaky, and then some people who are probably like fuck the light side, dark side all the way, baby. Um, I'm, I hate to put Ryan on the spot, but also I love it. Uh, Ryan, you can also say no. But chat, how much would you like it if Ryan were to become a regular of uh, Star Griff Mondays? This is what he does, right? He does it live so that you you can't escape. Would you be asking me or asking the chat? I'm asking the chat. Fuck you. You don't have a choice. <laughs> Bro, your chat, I am like the last Jedi to your chat. I, <laughs> I, there there are some I mostly don't I mostly don't look at it to be honest. But um when I do, it's just like some of you guys well, love me. One. Some of you want me to so actually fucking die. Spam gonna, one if you want, uh, my vote is yes, by the way, and I count my for, vote is yes. uh, like half of chat's vote or whatever. So I think that we're already up to 50% at least. But I was going to say as well, on top of that, uh, I think that Ryan, you are super controversial to his chat, but it's funny because you've been softening a lot of your opinions. I'm more than aware of that. And to be honest with you, so am I. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you? It's the yeah, way, like, yeah, but it's how you, I think you softened yours as well, somewhat, theory, in terms of like. Me? You're more susceptible and, and like like chill with harsh criticisms. You try and meet them halfway. We all are, but like as time goes on, we'll probably be more harsher, maybe with certain. Like, because things. you guys like, are my if, friends. Exactly. Talking, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If I'm no. on my channel, like talking to my chat, like yeah. I'm not gonna like hold back at all. I might use some hyperbole because everybody there is familiar with me and like my takes. 
when I'm here, obviously there's a lot of people that don't know me. So I'm going to give my actual take, but I might, you know, present it in a way that's maybe more appealable to somebody who fucking hates my guts. <laughs> you know that's what, I mean? what I'm getting at is like yeah. in our respective home bases, like on right. EFAB, Dave Filoni is seen as like a child who can't write anything. But here, I'm like, well, I'll be clear. I, I I understand that he has a point of view that he's learned from this and that, and he's done this and achieved this. But that I think he's failed here, here, here. As time goes on, the three of us can probably be a little more honest, or not even honest, a little more brash, because, yes, because we'll, we'll sure. because the audience will have a better and better understanding of how we speak and how we think. The poll is up, everyone. So go vote. The poll. I love that you just try to trap Ryan. <laughs> the, the, it's it's he's funny. A big boy. He can say the, no. Bro, He's the reaction boy, to the the reaction to was it was it last week when I was just like, "What needs to happen to baby?" And I'm like, "He just needs to fucking die." And so yeah. like, now yeah, I'm yeah, always yeah. like, "Hey, you need to be a little more brash." Okay. <laughs> I yeah. heard you, I agreed with you. That's why I was well, like, "What you say?" Like, like put, him, put him in a meat that. grinder. It's like put him in a meat grinder or something. I'm like, "Whoa, holy like, shit!" Yeah. I, I don't recall saying that, but I certainly could have. Well, the thing about that one too is that that's not even a harsh hot take because a lot of people in chat believe he should be killed as well. Like just, yeah. uh, you know, know, our hottest take. Sometimes we're not even sure which ones it'll be. We'll see. From chat. Right. My my hot take was that I gave the Batman an eight out of ten. That's like my <laughs> historic hot take. Well, you're my sitting at ninety percent right now with six hundred votes. So that's pretty good. In a minute, one mm. minute. Right. I guess I got to do it. I don't. I can't commit to. I can't commit to every single week, but I will. I will try to be here. I'll try to be here. Two o'clock PT, five o'clock EST every Monday. Wait, so go. the time you guys started today is that our normal time now? Yeah, let's do that as a normal time. Okay, okay. Three I, I need to like absorb that information because I was I was so fucking confused today because <laughs> I think I'd agreed to it, but I forgot I agreed to it. The the movie. Yeah, I back. probably should have updated you. I'm sorry. I, I literally my bad. I, I didn't sleep and then I ended up calling PayPal at fucking six in the morning. It was nine in the morning here, and then I. Went, went got breakfast and I came back to bed and I'm like, oh shit, it's time for Star Group. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Let's start. Oh you know shit, the Bad Batch is out. Oh, okay. You, you know what's crazy is that I just noticed because I looked at, ever since I put this hat on, I don't look as yellow. It's like it changed the white balance. I don't look as jaundiced as I did before I put this on. Yeah, no. It, yeah, it's great. See, but I look fucking yeah. yellow. <laughs> <You're> fucking <laughs> dying, dude. <laughs> And before he keeps this on all the time now. <laughs> I would love it if he did. That's balanced. There we go. It's okay. Um, it's better lighting than what the fuck I got going on right now. Like, Jesus, it's horrible. Look at this. I, I, I got this like random light hanging over my head here. I, know, but I, I ended up breaking by accident. And I got this lampshade over here. I don't know what I'm doing with this thing. I'm just figuring shit out. Does this microphone even sound good? Yeah, it sounds all right. It doesn't sound as good as uh, it should, I think, right? Because it's a yeah. short microphone. Yeah, I don't what, know what's going on. What, yeah, what is that? Just a uh, just a USB connector? Yeah. Uh, USB C. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It should sound better, but it would, before you came on, Mahler, like I don't know what the fuck he was using earlier, but then he like grabs that and it, it sounded like shit when he first plugged it, and it sounds better now. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, you see, when I arrive, uh, quality <laughs> just cranks all the way up, even other people's microphones. Mahler's Ooh. always cranking it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cranking his willy. Uh, yes. So if Luke tried to kill him while in a state of calm, he'd be okay? In theory, yeah. If Luke was to execute Palpatine to prevent something really bad from happening, whatever, in a calm way. But not, not like, that scene is a really bad example, because Palpatine's like, look, look at all your friends out there getting fucking killed. How's that make you feel? And Luke's like, oh, uh, yeah, not great. Not great, actually. <laughs> you know, it's not like he's he's not in a good state of mind to be making that decision. Though. Right. It's li it's literally just like um, in Revenge of the Sith when Palpatine is like, um, like sensing how much Anakin hates him and how much he wants to kill him. It's like that right. same exact feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The term light side was never mentioned in the OG films. I always assumed the force wasn't dualistic, but the dark side was just the force corrupted. Or out of balance. I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. Can I try something here? Let me know. Do it. Do you wanna... Last time he did this, he just like pulled the plug and muted himself. <laughs> How does this sound? Does it sound better? It's such a little nub of a microphone. <laughs> yeah, it's like 
Man, that's a big old condom for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's not even it's not even meant for this thing. <laughs> Couldn't find it. Uh, yeah, does it sound better? Or does it sound the same shit? It sounds kind of the same. Okay. I'm I'm fine with that. You know, it's always better going in raw. So yeah, rather than like have that. some big ass thing in my face. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'd rather have a small penis in my face than a big one. <laughs> As a man, yeah. Yeah. Uh, even if he killed Palpy in anger, it's a righteous anger, isn't it? Not all anger is born of malice. Can't the dumb force distinguish the two? All right. To end this, <laughs> if he had killed Palpatine, he may have been able to like not go crazy and start using the force to dominate with power and kill everyone or everything. Uh, he may have like been like, I'm okay, I'm, I'm balanced, I understand, I blah blah blah. But the he the character himself was like, I ain't. I ain't striking someone down in the state of being that I am. I'm instead gonna follow my father's footsteps, knowing what he knew, uh, you know, before he turned and everything. Like, it, it's not just the mechanics of the Force or what could happen to him. It's, it's so primarily focused on Luke, what Luke is thinking at the time, what Luke knows, and what uh, decisions he feels he needs to make. Especially staring at his father, knowing that he made the mistake when he was faced with the same decision. Thank you, just I please. still. <laughs> what i was just He's... thanking the super chatter for his 10 super chats yeah yeah dude thank you for that um i personally think that if luke had killed him he wouldn't have been like okay now i'm going to join you dad i'm part of the dark side i, I don't, don't think, think that's, that's how it worked no i don't think that that's what the film is arguing either i think it's trying to say that luke will now use like anger and and force to in, in, engage with what he believes is right to the point where right. you know a Leia or a Han could be like oh we need to do this and then he's just like no you'll do this and you'll right. do this and it's just like, right. okay. like that, that's what happened like to Vader now he got misled and convinced that this would be right for the galaxy right but he decides to use the dark side to further what he believes is the right thing for the galaxy and for the people he cares about right you know yeah Yoda himself says the Sith must be destroyed in order to bring balance. The entire prophecy that Anakin would bring balance to the Force makes no sense if the Force automatically balances. Correct. Which is why I'm saying that Mortis doesn't make sense, and why I like why that's my interpretation of what George well, is saying. I'm with you on that, but the people who would make that statement would then respond with that is the Force automatically automatically balancing by bringing Anakin in to do what he does. Like that's probably how they would uh, frame that. Yes, but by balancing it, he doesn't make sure there's an equal number of Sith no, and Jedi, yeah. right? That's not what the Chosen One does to bring balance. The Chosen One erases the dark side to bring balance. Yeah, because there's like actually no more Sith at that point that we know of, right? Correct. Now, of course, that gets a little sketchy. Just continue on. You do yeah, because there's going to be more and more and more. And they'll be like, actually, there was a guy called Grumbo who has three lightsabers on his face, and you got to kill him, too, because he, he was... <laughs> yeah, Grumbo, the last of the surviving Sith. The um, last Sith. The last Grumbo. But that's, that, and that's why, I mean, that's why I interpret it that way from not only what George is saying, but also from the way it was described, like, all the way up through everything. First several decades of Star Wars storytelling. Mm-hmm. All right, we got a thousand votes, over a thousand votes. Eighty-eight percent say, "Yeah, let's have Ryan." Mm, I guess it's not a choice now. Yeah, you got no choice. Uh, the will of the people, the wills, the wills, Thanks. the wills of the forest must bring balance, and I think I am here to bring balance uh, to this podcast. All right, Bendu. By eliminating the Sith. All right, go, go, boy. Bendu is proof the force isn't female. Sorry. Yeah, what about that? Did we ever ask Bendu his pronouns? Now you see Ahsoka limp out of the temple as well. That was the video we played. Yes. We're so that far it, back? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah so if you remember, like, when Ezra pulls Ahsoka in season four, she's about to get sliced by Vader. Right. My interpretation is Ezra prevents that from happening. Ahsoka goes back to the world between worlds in an opening that is in that same like time and place. Yeah. That's her like after. So why I did that they was do that at all? If if she's limping out at the end and we're like, oh so she survived, why have the will between worlds thing at all? Exactly. 
And that's the thing, like it's it's not like Ahsoka comes back in season three or like finds her way back. It's she's out. Everyone thinks she's dead and has been dead for years. Yeah, that's what I was always confused about. I'm like, well, if she's all right, then what's what it's not believable that Vader couldn't kill her. Yeah, and that that's kind of why Or is it just left to interpretation? Like maybe we're just supposed to be like, well, who knows what happens? Yeah, it is Falone. Um but... I know he likes to leave shit to interpretation. <laughs> it's true. I like and, that. I don't mind it. Yeah. As it all great storytellers do. That could be used as a generous shield, I think, at times. It could be, yes, for sure. He he does so not like, like to give, like, hard definitions on shit like that. He's always, like, very squirmy. Like, well, like, you know, it really just depends on your per, per, on your point of view. Yeah, That's but I, kinda... I love that. I actually like that kind of stuff because it's like, oh, cool. Like, okay, so I can kind of, like, go any way I want with this sort of thing. Yeah, but your also, name's literally I'm... fucking Star Wars Theory. Of course you like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah, sorry. I want to be able to use my imagination a little bit. But, I have no imagination. No, I know. You want direct answers. Um, Molly, I'm somewhere in between. A, did you ever yes. do a thing on Inception? Uh, like a video or coverage or anything? Yeah, because the end to that is totally up to interpretation. Oh, yeah, I hate the ending of Inception. <laughs> so, <laughs> But that the thing is, ambiguity in ending, like The Thing is probably one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and that's a hyper-ambiguous ending. Well, depending on who you talk to, it's hyper-ambiguous. Then you have like Blade Runner being... Uh, depending again on who you talk to, ambiguous as to whether or not he's a replicant. Um, I'm trying to think of like other famously classic sort of stories that kind of with Joker, uh, 2019 Joker, where they were, they were like, you know, as the end, it, how much of it happened in his head, how much of it was real. Um, right. Again, I want to make sure because fucking chat going to get triggered. It's like, no, it's down to every individual. What I'm saying is the fact that there's a big fight between people as to whether or not one ending or the other one suffices, it's, it, you could argue there's an ambiguity for those. Wait, you think in Joker with Joaquin Phoenix that a lot of that was happening in his head? There are yeah. people who run that theory because of how the film closes out. But for me, uh, personally, I think all of it happened, you know? Yeah, like there's obviously some that clearly he did have in his head. But the, the yeah. totality, like once he figures that out and snaps out of it, like he understands that I think all that's real and how it ends is real. Which is, but the way it ends... And this is why I Whoa. hate that we're getting a second one. The, the way it ends is so perfect because what is up in the air is what the fuck happens to this city after this, mm -hmm. right? Um, we don't need a second one. We don't need it. And I hate, I hate that we're getting a but second Ryan, one. But Ryan, what if it's good, though? With Lady, yeah. Lady Gaga? Yeah. But Mahler, what if it's bad? That would be the time where I, I'm like, well, we shouldn't have got this. But if it's good, I'll be like, ooh. No, hold Some on. people How think Alien saying? never should have got a sequel. So really like Terminator never should have got a sequel. Can you please explain to me how there are moments that made you believe that it could have been a all just like in his head? Because so in the end, he's just he's standing on that cab or that cop car. Was it a cop car, I think? And he's well, if you remember, it's all did something framed lips. as like he's talking to a psychiatrist or whatever, and then he kills right. her at the end. Or uh, you know, how much of it do you one hundred percent believe? Um, th this is part of the problem actually, because now I'm saying like. It's a musical. People say it as to why it's evidence that it would be bad. It's like there are good musicals, so yeah. let's, 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 let's calm down. But also, um, I love music. You know how he imagined the girlfriend. He imagined a whole relationship with her. It's God, like if that was confirmed in his head, then it's like so. Is is it going any further than that? And I think there's a couple of visual cues. I can't remember if it was like with clocks or something that there's there's things that are out of whack in the, in certain shots deliberately. And so some people theorize that all of it was in his head, but that. Or like a fantasy, or that some of it was. Like I said, I prefer thinking that most of it was real. Yeah, I think it's. I, yeah, I always thought it was real. I, I don't know. That's an interesting theory, though. I like that. I like that kind of stuff. I like yeah. theory channels. Joker theory. Well, yeah, do you, have you guys seen the theory of the Kevin McAllister grown up as Jigsaw? That's fun. <laughs> what? No, that's hilarious. <laughs> That's it's amazing. All, people are way too into these connected universes now. I love that. <laughs> that would make so much sense. That like we okay. saw his beginnings, the beginnings of like these ways to like torture people, put them through these games was like <laughs> everybody awesome. walking through his house in Home Alone. That's fucking awesome. I dude, I would love to watch that video. There's a video? Yeah, yeah, there's a video for that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that after this. Did we it was the Whitworth Sackoff interview where he had <laughs> admitted to working on a secret project with Ron Moore? Uh, no. Let's see that. That was on Katie Critique Sackoff's series. YouTube channel. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mahler's critique series of the sequel trilogy is legendary. Mm -hmm. 
long though. Yeah, I was talking to someone last night. She's a big fan of your channel. She said she's watched it, your that, that video three times over. Which one? <laughs> it's, it's like see, that of them. See the eleven hour one. Which one? <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't. I don't watch all your eleven hour shit. I'm not gonna sit there. I love you, but goddamn, I'm not gonna sit for eleven hours. All right, I give it a thumbs up regardless. Cool. Yeah, I do. Sure, well, and I'll drag it to the end. You know. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. I mean, I feel I'm happy to hear that someone's enjoying it. Is what I mean. No, oh, no, I'm obviously going to help my boys' analytics. Oh, I appreciate it. YouTube, I watched the whole thing. Okay. Uh, Still waiting on Force Awakens, Mahler. Mm-hmm. So I, the only thing I want you to do before you die, content-wise, <laughs> is finish your Force Awakens critique. You and fucking everyone else. I'll get mm-hmm. to it. I swear. The, the the big reveal of that is literally just uh, I'm, I'm desperate to try and work on things, and then just calamities happen, where like an editor's working on a project and something goes horribly wrong, and so I'm like, oh, I'll I'll help you out, and then fucking a month mm-hmm. goes by, and I'm like, oh shit, like I haven't been able to work on anything else. Lord of the Rings messed everything up, but man, was that video worth it though? How long did it take to make those eleven hour videos? Uh, obviously, if it's a stream, like, like twelve, hours, like twelve but... hours, and then with editing. Oh, is that yeah, right? Yeah, right. But if it's fully edited, uh, the longest I've spent on a fully edited video was seven months, I think. Jesus Christ. Uh, World Between Worlds was the Deus Ex Machina to save Ahsoka because she can't beat Vader, and Filoni knows that. Again, though, was... um, I thought that the implication from the original was just that the building fell and they both sort of got separated. Adding the will between wills to be like, see, that's how she escaped. Feels like it creates more problems than it solves. Right, that's what I also thought too. I'm like, oh, okay, something must have happened and they separated at some point. Hmm. Thoughts on the theory Palpatine using the will between wills to escape the exploding Death Star. Oh God. Oh, God. He opened it. He opened a portal to the world between worlds as he was falling down. <laughs> you know who else shot. did? Fucking mole as he was falling oh, well, down. He was like, the, <laughs> opens it up. The rise of Skywalker. The book said was that he, while he was falling, his soul already went into the fucking vessel on Exegol before his body hit the ground. <sighs> I just, I don't know. I get that everyone likes Palpy. He's a really fun bad guy, but. Maybe no, he dies. Change. Yeah, he, he's dead. Maybe George he's dead. wanted him dead. He's dead. Well, it's crazy because this was um in the expanding universe, Dark Empire, very controversial because they also um you know had a clone of Palpatine and it was using force essence transfer and like all these things. And when that came out, people like there was very there's a big split. That's like historically, mm. when you go back, that's one of the more controversial things. Now, mm. George did approve that storyline what they wanted to do was have somebody running around in vader armor um for that storyline and use that as a way to get like luke skywalker involved george vetoed that but said it can be a palpatine clone um but that was set up a little bit differently uh luke engages it completely differently and now when you look back at that people are like god it wasn't too bad when they did this was it compared to what they decided to do for Rise of Skywalker. But it's just funny that they st- they ripped off a plot line and did it so much worse. But what they do. Uh-huh. Reva was worse version of that chick from Jedi Fallen Order, and Hux became a worse version of Agent Callus from Rebels. Older ideas made worse. They do a lot of that. Apparently Hayden Christensen is rumored to be voicing Shadow of the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog yeah. on the new Sonic. Hmm. Yeah, I heard about this. I hope that's true. I want them to name it Sonic Shadow of the Hedgehog. I need him to call Sh- Sonic a liar at some point. Shout it at him. <laughs> Darth Bane versus former master Kasim is my favorite lightsaber duel outside of episode one and six. Do you guys have a favorite duel out of the movies? Outside of the movies. Yeah, mine would be um mine would be Luke Skywalker versus Jason Solo. And uh, basically just a little bit before Legacy of the Force ends. I, I fucking love that duel. Both of them end up pretty fucked up. And ironically, Luke has Jason dead to rights, but he doesn't kill him because his son is watching and his son like wants to be the one to fucking, he really wants him dead. And Luke realizes that I can't fucking 
kill Jason, even though he's such a big threat. I can't kill him right now because I can't have my son watch that happen. And I might fucking fall to the dark side if I do it right now, too. Because this is after, well, I'd be spoiling a lot of the Legacy of the Force. But I'll just put it that way. Um, seeing those guys go toe-to-toe -to -toe was great. Probably that um, fight for me in the Plagueis novel where Palpatine goes to actually save Plagueis. And he's like going through that. He's like climbing that vent and then he drops in in this like room full of these. Uh, fuck, who was it? It was these like very rich. It was supposed to be were. the secret society of people and like Plagueis so. was getting indoctrinated, but they were all actually assassins. Dude, he yeah. literally like like sets the place on fire and like kills like massacres everybody just uses the force to like explode people and shit. just fuck, yeah like x-men shit i also like how you see plagueis gets like injured in that and, like only one and like mm -hmm. one of his hearts stops beating and like yeah. they really go into detail about how like the moon physiology and like what he's doing to help keep himself alive and shit yeah yeah i really like that book a lot i think it's really cool i was quite fond of seeing that uh final fight between mole and obi-wan you mean the, the like two second fight? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it counts as a yeah. duel or not, but uh, of course, it, of course it counts. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, seeing that out of context, and that I was told like this is not representative of the quality of the show it's from, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> but like this is kind of uh, cool though. You know, well, if you're stuck with Darth Maul is definitely alive, then that seems like a pretty strong ending again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, maybe he's alive again and again. Striking a balance, it, maybe Reva finds him in the desert and resurrects him. Striking a, a balance is vital. Excessive devotion to the light side leads to strictness, like the Jedi ban on marriage, a fundamental human need. This aspect of Jedi shows corruption and distortion. Can't wait for Admiral Holdo beating Thrawn in a <laughs> season. <laughs> I wouldn't go, I wouldn't count it out, honestly. I really wouldn't. We'll get a young uh, Holdo, right? And she'll be like a plucky, uh, aggressive officer that's gonna actually like do really well. And she's actually like she best admirable. friends with Hera. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't they do that? that? That's right in line with everything else. Kill me. The book Supernatural Encounters might provide insights into this. However, it's considered canon, non-canon, or possibly part of the EU. Yeah, Supernatural Encounters is kind of be gonna be a hybrid. To be honest, I know they're using a little bit of Disney lore in there as well. So. <laughs> But essentially a bunch of unpublished shit that uh, they've kind of discovered and they're trying to get out. My favorite thing listening to this is realizing how gay Star Wars is. Oh. When we were sitting there arguing over like how exactly the daughter died and how exactly the son died and like all this shit. I love that shit. There's a clip where Dave Filoni said George wanted to soak it to die in Clone Wars. Yeah. I know. Hello, Parker. Never catch you guys live. Glad I did. Love the podcast on Spotify from Melbourne, Australia. What's up, Philip? Thanks, man. Thanks for catching the podcast. If they pull off Ventress coming back, they got to pull off Ventress live action. That's what we need. Yeah, there's really not enough, uh, you know, strong female characters in Star Wars right now. They could really use another. I mean, technically, there really isn't. I I know you're being sarcastic, but I actually no. I fully agree with that. I, I there's think no good that, ones. No, yeah. there aren't. I think the actual good characters are already written by George. I don't think... Is there one good character besides Jin Erso? This was like an okay character written by Disney? A good female character? Um, Kira was alright. Rose Tico, obviously. Oh, fuck. She was great. She almost Kira was the entire right. rebellion of their lives. Bro, I, I, I wish I like... When I went to see Solo in theaters, the theater was empty. I really wish I could have been there with like just a room full of people when Darth Maul showed up. 95% of them have no fucking idea why Darth Maul's there. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> they didn't watch Clone Wars. They're oh, wait. Like, are we, right. are we including everything guy? from uh, from Disney, you ask him? Because, yeah, I mean, pretty much uh, everyone in, in uh, Andor that has significant screen time is pretty strong. And you've got plenty of women in that. But the thing is, Mon Mothma isn't original. Or um, I'm trying to remember all their names. I keep for I keep forgetting the fucking um, Kino Loy's name. It's such a fucking Star Wars name. Kino like the, the all the all the Star Wars names. Like if you you need to repeat them a couple bunch of times before they like embed in your brain. Sometimes it's always like Jimbo John. That sort of that format. Grumbo. Yeah. Or 
Because Jar Jar, the three Jar Jar's is easy to remember. That's what job makes Jar Jar so strong as a character. Is it's very easy to remember. Binker, you know, the Binkster. That sort Binkster. of thing. <laughs> but you have, you know, some other names that you just fucking forget. What's the what's the female Imperial officer's name? What's her name? Uh, Deidre. Oh, did yeah. Oh yeah, um, Chaskar Deidre Miro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See Star Wars name. That yeah, that's like when I start up Kotor and I just hit a random name generator. Like <laughs> Deidre Mira or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You just want to have someone who's just like, I'm Jawed. <laughs> like, oh, hey, man. Do you think Survivor's guilt can be enough of a consequence if done well? Huh? I, um, I guess they're just trying to say is is giving someone Survivor's guilt after resurrecting them enough to justify like doing that. Basically, whenever you resurrect a character, you want to have a cost. Um, that's the best way to try and justify it from an audience standpoint because something needs to be taken. You can't just give it all back. It ruins the uh, the payoff. So, yeah, maybe you could work with that. What's up, Maddie? That's it right there. People working on Star Wars have no idea what they're doing. A bunch of people who have latched on to Star Wars for its success to enhance their own careers. Star Wars Theory and Maul, have y'all seen 1997 parody? Of course. Troops is like the number one fan film is one of the originals. I have not. I like. Are you? Fuck, uh, Ryan. Do you think you could pull it up? Um, let me see. Think. I like how the sequels. Well, maybe we'll watch it another time. I like how the sequels insist the galaxy was at peace during the thirty-year gap between six and seven. Yet the Disney Plus shows have these crazy galaxy-changing events occur. What did they accomplish in the OT? Yeah. Well, it's just they're trying to create the remnants, right? So they're trying to create this, continue the story. It, it was a really big mistake to set everything up like, oh, yeah, like a year and a half after Return of the Jedi. That's when like the last battle was fought or it was fought. And it was just nothing else after that. It's so insane to imagine that, that with all the control that the Imperials had over the entire galaxy, despite their leadership crumbling, despite Palpatine being gone, it would take so long to mop oh, yeah. all that shit up. And that to me, that's one of the biggest faults that they had was making it so a year or two after Return of the Jedi is when the last thing is fought and then everything's peaceful to the point where they demilitarize. Yeah. Even um, It puts you in a, a fucking bind for any storytelling in between there. Even at the right. end of the Clone Wars, erasing most of the Separatist leaders, a lot of the Star Wars stuff that came out between three and four said... Well, you still got some separatists, you know, in different places that you got to deal with. I was gonna, we were talking about the five of first last week, I think. Um, the storyline in Battlefront 2. It's like what they basically do is clean up after the Clone Wars because there's plenty of like different pockets of people doing different crazy things. And yeah, the Empire would be more poised to do that than even the, the separatists were. Wouldn't be the hmm. first time. What was worse, sequels or Game of Thrones final seasons? Sequels. Yeah, I ask these difficult questions. It's uh, Star Wars is just way more embedded, so the damage feels more significant. But I mean, the, they were pretty surgical in the final season of Game of Thrones. They destroyed everything, and oh, that's not that's not easy. No, it's not. It, so. It's tough because people very much like think they have a reason for it. It's like, well, Dan and Dave ran out of story, like they ran out of George's things, and people still are like, I can't wait till George finishes. I mean, he wins a winner will probably come out after he fucking dies. We'll get like an unfinished script. We're never gonna see Dream of Spring, but like, there's still so much. It, it feels like it's pretty easy to separate those two things for people, but I don't know. And also, I, th I I honestly thought that after the bad taste that Game of Thrones left in my mouth for season seven and eight, kind of half a six, that I was going to hate House of the Dragon. Yeah, I've same. never been more pleasantly surprised by a series than House of the Dragon. I cannot wait for season two, dude. It's going to be dope. Yeah, well, we'll be covering that together with uh, Gary, right? I think. Yep. Have Fun you read uh, Fire and Blood, Maul? Or Maul? Maul. <laughs> Hey, the name's awesome. working. Uh, so, well, I made a decision. I was like, I could read it, but at this point, I think my preferred format is now going to be watching the show. And Gary was saying that it's more enjoyable as a format as well because the Fire and Blood's like like a history, right? Like a, a description rather than a story. 
Yeah, Fire and Blood is basically uh, a Cliff Notes version of Westerosi history. Yeah. And it's so, told from three slanted perspectives. So it's very tough some, to figure out who is, which one is real, which one's an exaggeration, blah, blah, blah. Something of a format change that happened was when we did the coverage of like the first few episodes, me and Gary, um, he was just flooding in spoilers. Uh, as far as I remember, I wasn't paying any attention really because I didn't know anything about it. And I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we'll go. Yeah, blah, 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 I care to do. As the episodes went on, I would stuff be like, you know, David's really awesome that he's like, oh, yeah, just wait until I was like, well, you know, <laughs> you don't need to tell me. <laughs> like it's... And then uh, I think even people in chat, more and more people who were like starting to like the show were like, yeah, don't fucking talk. Don't even speculate based on the book. So that's going to be weird because uh, you guys are going to have to save that for like your own stream, maybe, if you want to speculate based on knowing what happens. Mm. We'll see. I feel like the only clones to make it out of season three will be Gregor, Rex, and Wolfie. Hence why they were the only ones alive in Rebels and they were used. Uh, it's very possible, but I don't see them killing off the entire Bad Batch team. That would just be kind of weird. And that one random one that Obi-Wan ran into on that planet. <laughs> <laughs> I was, oh, yeah. I'm was. i more interested in that fucking dude's story than any of the rest yep. of the Obi-Wan series. Yeah, yeah that guy I was cool. I remember just being like, oh, what does that mean? What's that? Oh, nothing. Okay. Yeah, literally nothing. Thanks, Deborah. Yeah. Thanks, Joby Harold. Well, we say that now, and then, like, the next Star Wars announcement spinoff, like, Toonie, the clone that you saw in this. Is, like, <laughs> Toonie. We're going to get a we're gonna get a 13-episode Disney Plus series. We're spending $300 million on it. Yay. <laughs> he's he's going to have, like, a female companion who's better than him. Spending in $1 billion on it. And just just like, like, why? On <laughs> Toonie, the clone. <laughs> Just, it's just desert, and then it's just like this it's nice cat trooper cat music. Rufus. Yeah. <laughs> and Rufus falls to the dark side, and he's like, "No, Rufus, please." <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and they're like, "We're not sure if there's going to be a season two yet." Fans are mixed on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're you sitting there speculating about Toonie season two. <laughs> And no, see that spin-off. theory guy. He made so many videos already about it. <clears throat> Fucking people are reminded me of Wade as well. Wade. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, Wade. <sighs> yeah, that was unfortunate. I... Darth I, I love the idea that somebody 90... said Darth Uchi. Somebody said Darth Uchi Disney Plus series. <laughs> <laughs> Uchi. Well, Uchi's got an interesting story. I want to know about him. <laughs> don't, 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 that Uchi. <laughs> Rip Wade, man. Yeah. Pouring out for Wade. Like yeah. I said, 98% of the audience went, Who? Oh, shit. Did we know that guy? Damn. He's dead now, I guess. <laughs> and then 2% because they're so confused were like, No. <laughs> wait, Not <who>? him. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Wait, who? No, please. Service theory, we should test your metal via rags. You two should talk about stars before the prequels and Andor. If you survive, you'll be a true master. Who's rags? It's my co-host on EFAP, who's, I guess, more known for being a bit uh, more... Hmm, what word can I use? Abrasive could be the word. He's uh, He likes the prequels, but he would call them very bad. No, oh, yeah, sure. I think that'd be a fun discussion. Ooh. Somebody in yeah. chat said an Admiral Akbar, back, an Admiral Akbar backstory. They don't care about it. No, it can't be a character that like we care about. They would be like, "Whoa, <laughs> like why would we ever take a character you guys actually give a shit about?" No, no, no. Let's get Admiral back to Akbar was a, a fucking slave. He worked on the Death Star and was like assigned to Tarkin. And, and then the about first strategy. episode, he kicks him in the face and says, "You'll never be in a position of power to do anything to this structure ever." He's like, hmm. I have been oppressed for long enough. Yeah. Trust your weight. Yeah. Trust your weight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jumps into a fishbowl. <laughs> Flushes himself down a toilet. <laughs> Family guy style. <laughs> Just like twists around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 
and Luke married Mary Jade in the EU and they had a son. That's right. Just for a favor, a member of the John Williams Fan Network Forum has started a petition to get the complete soundtracks to the OT released. Could you guys maybe give it a shout out to help the music get the release they deserve? Why doesn't it have a release? Wouldn't that be going against George? Start a petition to get the complete soundtracks to the OT released. They mean including bloopers. Like every time, you know, a violin is fucked up and they're like, ah, oh, cut. Oh, no, <laughs> over. I don't, I don't know exactly what that, I don't know exactly. I, 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 I mean, in theory, I could imagine that there was some stuff that they that that they recorded for it for scenes that maybe didn't make the final cut or things like this. So I, I can see there being some stuff out there that we haven't heard. That is funny enough. <laughs> it's just so funny, man. It's zoomed in. It's just so fucking funny. Especially when I'm like talking serious. Yeah, the seriousness is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the reality is I'd be all for releasing all of John Williams stuff if he'd stop fucking copyright claiming everything that has two seconds of John Williams fucking score. Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones, Star Wars. Motherfucker claims every single thing. I can't play a damn video game. I can't play Battlefront without this fuck. As if you need more money, John Williams. Stop fucking copyright claiming my shit. And you know what? John is specifically targeting your channel. He's like that Ryan Channel playing Battlefront 2 again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, uh, you killed fuck. three again. He's dead. Finally, the mainstream media got what they wanted. <laughs> now Ryan's going to be the hero. Uh, yeah. They don't know what they're dealing with now. The Pharaoh hero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the unknown hero. Uh, uh. I keep breaking this fucking chair. God damn it. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's it's really annoying how they uh, they copyright so much shit that has like 0. 0.2 seconds of a John Williams song, man. Like it was like a nine hour stream I did, and it was like maybe ten seconds of I think it was one of the one of the songs from Revenge of the Sith, and fucking they took the whole stream, all nine hours. Fuck them. Not John Williams, like the whoever who is it? <laughs> fuck John Williams. Dude, no, not fuck. No, never. No, he can have all the money he wants for my channel, but uh, he can't have mine. I don't have as much <laughs> as you. I don't have as many fucking subs as you. I need that shit. I'm trying to live here, John. You're like fucking ninety. You got enough. <laughs> you don't need money anymore. <laughs> fuck. Now this is gonna be my fault again. Random, but after I saw your video with Nick Gillard, I knew I recognized him from a movie. I figured out he's the German soldier in Last Crusade who's laughing at Indy through the periscope on the tank. Jo it, Nick's been in a lot of different that. movies, a lot of different projects. Yeah. People just recognize him for Star Wars. But he's been in a ton of different stuff. Be thankful... It hasn't gone full non-binary, preachy like Star Trek Discovery. Hopefully, I'll I've known, I've never known such god awful storytelling. Kylo's turn of the dark side never made any sense. Your uncle tries to kill you, therefore you become a genocidal maniac. I guess they'd all use already. I don't know, dark side because Snoke had been like whispering him to him at night on his phone or something. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you have to read the Rise of Kylo Ren comic book arc, Ugh. where oh god. Snork is swear Snork. <laughs> where Snoke is actually like communicating with Kylo and like Snork. doing that shit to him. Snork. That's what his name should be. Fucking hell. Snork. Snork. What I call Grogu the other day. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I remember you fucked it up. It was um, or something. Something like that. It's great. You're getting the mucus out of my head. Uh, Mahler, do you think Dave can improve with more live action reps since Ahsoka was his first project? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's more than possible, right? Like, there's no reason why it shouldn't be. It's just that from keeping an eye on him, not even like fully, I just I get a sense that giving him more power and more creative control is not the answer we're looking for. Um, so I worry that it's going to get worse before it gets better. But hey, you know what? We'll see. Maybe I'll be getting myself another lightsaber. Who knows? Maybe. Can't get any worse. Chat, make sure you're hitting that like button right now. 
Never say. How's my year? How's my favorite Irishman? Hey, you know what? The theory, he, 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 he got it right yeah, eventually. Yeah. 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 Fuck. Yeah. How long of a flight is it from from uh, Scotland? Is he from, is he from Scotland? Is Drinker from Scotland? It was Ireland. <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> Fuck off. Whatever. I was, how? Scottish people talk like this, like Braveheart. <laughs> yeah. And the Irish people talk like leprechauns. <laughs> oh, shit. See, you could say it. I, I can't say that. They got to remember it. There you, you go. Oh, what do Welsh right. people talk like? Well, Welsh people talk, I guess. That's how they talk. A lot of them, anyway. And then you got like the fucking rugby players who talk like this. Yeah, and then you got like the billion English languages. To be fair, sorry, accents. You got like a all kinds of variations of all of them, but those are like I guess the four major for Britain. Um, What's Cockney? Or right, governor? Mm. It's like people that sound poor as shit. That's what I think. <laughs> right, yeah. Mahler? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, you get some yeah. rich ones doing it, I guess. Fuck, dude. Huh. So what's a London accent? Well, this right now, little... right now it's like, thank you, come again. It's just um, old accents. That everybody's around. I I don't actually know oh. if there's something of a London accent. I don't think there is. Well, it is, I guess it's just proper English, like, like James Bond. Hello. I'm from England. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very old. Uh, no, I don't know about all this streaming business. Fucking <laughs> Nigel Thornberry or something. <laughs> Smattering. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so then what, it, what What was Austin Powers? Uh, like, well, English. Mike Myers. Yeah. yeah. Like the accent would be just English. I don't know about this, but I'm not even that good at specific. I just know the broad ones, obviously. Like, a, I figure it should piss Americans off when people say an American accent because there's like a thousand of those, right? Yeah. But we, but the thing is, we're some, we're such a bigger country, right? So. People that are in the Northeast are going to sound way different than people in the South or people in the in the Midwest and shit like that. Mm -hmm. For you guys, obviously, is a much smaller country. Like regionally, it kind of makes sense why you have you know those yeah. different accents. Like your Northeast would be a certain area, and your Southern accent would be like a certain area. And I get it. But as Gary said, we talk gooder. <sighs> Mahler, well, what's your Star Wars hot take? A new one. Hmm. A new one. Like something I've never said before. Fuck, I don't know. Um, Ryan, help me out. Are your hot, your new Star Wars hot take? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I think you told me like I wasn't supposed to reveal this. We were DMing earlier, but you actually told me that Book of Boba Fett's your favorite show. Well, no, the, uh, the, the, the amount of like the the writing. You know, the fact yeah. that they had, you know, 14 pages of script for the entire season, that you actually like, the, love that. Once the Rainbow Vespas came in, I was like, so this is my show. Like, that's that's just, that's it. They made this for me. Oh, yeah. You're being sarcastic. Anakin's Force <laughs> Ghost will get Ray Preckers. Then he'll, uh... I like that one. Let's do it. Keep Ryan so that Rolling Stone has an easy target. Yeah, that's yes, really he's... what he's doing. He's fucking deflecting. He's the meat shield. Hiding behind the headdress. You can't get me Fuck now. Me, I'm diverse. What an idiot. Who wrote that article? What an absolute brain dead idiot. So she horrific. Said women don't belong in Star Wars. He agreed. I love the headline personally. Fuck you. Like, it's a fucking horrible article. I want Baby Yoda's end to be so horrific that it traumatizes everyone who loves that gremlin. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, my favorite part of my favorite part of season one was he got the shit kicked out of him. He was in that little bag. The stormtroopers. <laughs> that was a pretty good part. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was hard to watch. I was like, no, not this little man. Somebody did like a three-hour mix of that <laughs> just to Toto's Africa. <laughs> just with them punching the baby over and over. I love it. I used to play it at the end of my streams, and then get copyright uh, claim from fucking Toto. Probably, probably just by humming that right now. Legends Quinlan Voss goes to the edge between light and dark, but always vigilant in his ideals as a Jedi. Ayla Secure, on the other hand, not so much. Yeah, Quinlan Voss, badass. All right. Can see the great Pharaoh, please <clears throat> bless my harvest. Bless you, my son. 
when AI develops more than we can, more we can remake the sequels based on new Jedi Order books without needing any reactors in the future. Well, that's what I'm doing, man, with the freaking Dark Empire. It's not far off. In a few years, we'll probably be able to do that so easily. Resend? Did you see the recent interviews between... Oh, no, I read this one, bro. We're just behind. That's why you said resend. Yeah. Sometimes they get angry, though. Like, you didn't read it! It's like, well... The people, the people want what they want. Sometimes mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, money! Oh, huh, let me... Oh, oh, let me read this. Oh, you know, sometimes you gotta chill and have Dude, this, That's what I have to do. Like, I'm poor theory. There's fucking, there's fucking, <laughs> there's streamers who don't even read super chats. It blows my, like, you see Dr. Disrespect? He doesn't even fucking read them. Yeah, it's like, you know. Do like four or five thousand a stream, I, I assume. It, it fucking reads like two, ten. Yeah, imagine if, like, you're a person that sounds like a hundred dollar super chat being like, how much I, I love you and watch you every day or whatever. And then there's like one dude named like Boner King 69 who sounds like a 199. It's just like, thanks, Doc. He like reads that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, on. yeah. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, I, so, like, what we do on FNT, like, we FNT is getting like out of control. We're having yeah, how you know, do you guys 17, do 17, 18,000 people watching. We basically read all the big ones. So, we read all the big ones on stream. And then Gary typically does a super chat square up. So for all the other ones that are set on that stream, because we, you know, we only go three or four hours and there's a lot of super chats that get sent. So right. we, we read <clears throat> the, the big ones that come in on the stream and then Gary will do a super chat square up. He'll put that on the channel, just specifically release it. And so everybody gets their chat read at some point. But it's mm -hmm. if we were to do an entire stream read every one, we'd be going a, a long no, that, time. You know? So this is the thing that uh, I think all of us learned gradually is that the more you read live, the less likely you are to get through them, obviously. Uh, EFAP went from doing the show and then reading Super Chats, and then we ended up with uh, capping out our stream time. Like YouTube caps at 11.45, I think, hours. So we decided to split them into the stream show, and then we do all the Super Chats in a block offline so that the messages that come in that's what sure. came in. Uh, Drinker was doing open bar. We were doing a lot more live, but then he right. was like the show was going to be pushed way too fast. So he was like, "Well, I'll do is I'll do bigger ones." Or actually, I think he reads from the beginning to uh, somewhat to the end. He tries to go for like three hours ish. Yeah. Then we do a catch up episode. Uh, Real BBC, we do uh, I think from the beginning, and then he does a catch up stream as well. And I was just thinking to myself, like basically, if you're a regular streamer. Who responds to super chats you've got two streams uh most of the time because right. you gotta fucking do the catch-up part of it right it it's just about yeah. uh, it, well it's just about making sure the audience like has a certain expectation right so like yeah yeah no i i yeah that's cool but yeah, fnt's I mean? FNT fucking huge now it's crazy it, it's getting we almost hit 20k the other day which is that's amazing dude wild yeah, and, and you want to make sure that people's messages that are sent in are addressed. And uh, right. when, when you get to F and T yeah. size, it's starting to get actually like almost impossible. But from what I can tell, Gary's still doing a good job of keeping on it, which is impressive considering how much he runs. Yeah, no, that's good for him. That's why I have time to make so many videos because I don't get as many super chats. You know, so Gary spends all his time doing super chat <laughs> square ups. Well, your your videos are quick. They are. Some of those are like four minutes, and they're you know they're like. Uh... I'm known for being fast. Yeah, I see. That's what Mike Zero's doing now too, and he's killing it. He's he literally fucking like anything that starts to like do well on my channel. Mike Zero all of a sudden has a story about it, where it's like, <laughs> well, he's just, like, I, I, it'd be I like, like hey, this Rachel Zegler story took off, and then I, next thing I can see, Mike Zero's like, Rachel Zegler takes legal action against Disney after blah blah blah. It's like, man, Mike's killing it right now. He's getting these. <laughs> I, mean, I wish I, I wish I had no shame to just make up stories. But is he making up. them? I didn't. I don't watch that. Is he making them up or is he? Yeah, they're they're not real. Yeah, or is he just commenting on the news? He's making them up. You gotta say. You gotta say. In my opinion, otherwise you could be. In my opinion, in my, in my opinion yeah, otherwise. he's full of shit and making it up. Probably a good dude, uh, but. He is. I, but yeah, but, but if you but if you see a story or, or a headline from Mike Zero, it's not real. In my opinion, that's Ryan's opinion. In my opinion, that's Mahler's opinion of Ryan's opinion. In my opinion, no other opinions matter. <gasps> How dare you? 
Yeah, I would love to turn create like a, a Friday night tights of for Star Wars. That'd be cool. You mean like a big panel and we just talk mm -hmm. about I guess yeah, everything at this point. everything we talk about. But I think it would be fun to bring on guests over time. Right? Sure. Like but, but like polarizing guests, like people who like can fucking hate us or something, or you know, whatever. I think that would make it interesting. No. I thought it was funny when you had like I can't remember which stream it was. It was one of our star groups where uh, someone in chat was like, "Fuck you, theory!" Like you this, that, the other. And you were like, "Do you want to just jump on?" He was like, "No, <laughs> like I don't want to go anywhere." Near. He was like, they, they never just do. came onto I... the stream just to be a cock in chat and then leave. Like that's yeah, yeah. They never do. And I, I've so many times I've been like, "Hey, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll invite." And this goes to anybody right now that's watching. I know there's a lot of people from Twitter or Rolling Stone or whatever watching or whatever, but um, to clip something out of context. But if you ever want to just come on and talk, by all means, just let me know. No problem. I have no problem with that. I encourage that. I think communication <clears throat> is really important. Also, Fleam language was mentioned in an earlier Super Chat. There. That was... Uh, yeah, Fleam? Have... Fleam, Fleam language? It's, it's something that just happens over on, on EFAT. We use certain words that um, they're kind of magical in a way. Like... Uh... Like Tism, Wombo, Fleam. They, they they replaced it in other words so that you'll understand it in context eventually. Got you. You need a Rosetta Stone if you watch that show. That's what he's saying. Okay. Yeah. Like you're feeling pretty fleamy today, it seems. Fleamy. I thought I thought she was meaning like phlegmy because I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, that would work. <laughs> he's, he was like, yeah, you just got an accent. He's... <laughs> ah, I see. Uh, Yoda says the prophecy misread could have been Anakin did bring balance by killing off a majority of Jedi. At that point, there was way more light side users than dark side. That is the Freddie Prince Jr. like uh, explanation. Yeah. He's Sisyphus. Well, Michael Caine basically admitted that Inception's ending is real. <laughs> what? I'm laughing at that because that's what, what fucking Freddie Prince Jr. said. And uh, he's Sisyphus. No, you Greek mythology. Is real because no one said that any scene with him in it is real. Marco Kain. He's got one of the best. What's his accent? English. I just you can sound no, like I, him if you want. Just say my cocaine. No, I, I know, I know, but like you were saying, there's different dialects. Oh yeah, no, I was saying that there's so many that I don't even know the names of all of them. As might be better to ask for that. Like uh, you'd be able to tell you. Okay, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I always wondered what Michael Caine's was. Chat, do you know? It's not Cockney. Co Cockney, like, explain to me if this is correct. You know the, God, what is that fucking um, movie where they, uh, not Secret Service, Kingsman, Kingsman. Yeah. Um, when In the beginning of that, where they're like in the bar and like, that's Cockney, right? Ugh, you can barely fucking it. understand any <laughs> of them where they're like, oh, you really think that's something, isn't it? Like, whatever. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I think he might be cockney, but like um, relaxed sort of. This is the other problem with accents is that within the same accent, you can have like different sounding people because of how they, I don't know, how well they enunciate, I guess. Mm. Uh, you ever see that movie the, with the twins with uh, Tom Hardy? What was it called? Oh, uh, no, I haven't seen oh, it. He, just, he plays two characters. I know Are you're you thinking about, about but... Venom. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here you fucker. He does play two characters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Venom 3 hype, huh? Yeah, I can't wait to see the same story again. <laughs> Madam Webb is going to be killer, though. I've had many dislikes about theory, but never with misogyny. How the F do you get the idea theory is misogynistic? Almost the Disney is paying people to say it. Yeah, sometimes I wonder that. The thing is, though, like, there's people who... Hate us literally because of the fact that we like do damage to the overall perception of maybe Disney Star Wars, and they're just like, "Can I get something more real to hit them on, though?" And literally, you're just like, <clears throat> "Women," and then they go, "Ah, oh, got you." He's, he hates women. There you go, got him. Everyone can hate mm -hmm. him for real reasons now, instead of just saying you don't like Star Wars as it currently is. It's kind of so dope. It's actually brought out so many women that have messaged me and been like, "Oh, no, he's, you're, these people are insane." Like, Thank you. It is insane. I've never taken it fucking seriously. It's just no, it, they do it all the time. No. Like, I mean, it's, it's easier just, to make no, you into like a crazy villain. I've just never experienced a situation where 
I literally don't say a word, and yet it's as if it, all of a sudden. It, it, I, I, well, don't you know experience. silence is violence theory? So say I say something on this stream and you don't immediately disavow or say that's wrong, right? Then if you don't push back on hatred and bigotry or wrong opinions, then you yourself are responsible for it. I disagree with that. Yes. It's not enough to be like a normal person. You have to be an anti-racist or, you know, shit like that. That's kind of like the level we're at. I disagree with that. I just let people have their own opinions. I don't need to correct everyone else. You're going to have a tough time escaping the misogynist label when we rename this stream the misogynist triumvirate. That's what we're going for. Yeah. See, Mahler has, Mahler's, now Mahler will not be in trouble ever. I disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'd be right. I disagree with you on that one. It'd be funny if you guys say like, okay, let's get the stream to see you folks. Like, oh, I disagree with that. <laughs> Just got to make sure. This one's for you, Ryan. Um, off top of the question, Ryan read Star Wars Republic Commando series by Karen Travis. What's your opinion on the series if you read the books? Uh, yeah, I so they're not like my favorite, but I really like how they depict the clones in that. And Karen Travis actually had a lot of problems when Clone Wars came out because of so much of the work she did kind of building up that culture and how much really got fucking erased with TCW. Um, and it was enough to make Karen Travis basically just fucking leave. So um, I, li I like them. I think they're pretty good. Not my favorite, but I enjoy them. Biggest soupy of the night from J Mac. We appreciate you. Have any of you seen a channel called Renoke Gaming? Uh, he covers movie gay monsters diseases and goes into the science behind them. These are gay monsters. <laughs> <laughs> movie gay monsters diseases. That's some fringe shit. <clears throat> I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> <laughs> you better run. <laughs> <laughs> Yoda's retarded brother. <laughs> Eat you, I will. <laughs> he has a biology background, so his videos are interesting. I always think of French you know, I watch stuff super fun channel. Was that like a plug or something? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know, I don't know biology that. background videos are interesting. I always think of Fringy when I watch stuff. <laughs> I mean, sure, Roanoke Gaming. Yeah, I mean, I mean, sounds sounds like fun. I guess. Yeah. I've never mm. heard of it, but uh, no. I it's have an now. Topic. Yeah, interesting topic for sure. It's I would like it more if it the... was about gay monsters, but I oh, oh my 50, god, dude, fifty J Mac. Okay, this J Mac guy, he's he's given like fifty to hundred to FNT. I'm pretty sure real BBC, EFAP, uh, Adam and Sitch's stream, and this one. This man, he's a member person. He just members everybody for every stream. Is he oh, a yeah, member dude. here? No, he's he's not a member here. I think he, this is one think... of. That's Did he become crazy, a member dude. after that? Oh, he's a member now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. There he is. Thank you, man. Thank you, J Mac. That's cool. Soma's really good. Soma's on stream for three dollars right now. Who's Soma? It's a video game, and it's one that everyone should play. It's fucking baller. Oh, we got it. Are you doing a fan meetup at MegCon? Yeah, eventually when I'm there, we'll figure it out. I mean, I'm. We're, we're gonna do sure something. Yeah, Usually, how so... that stuff works is like someone just takes a a photo and then someone sees me and then the uh, line ends up forming randomly and it's like so well. we are going to um geeks and gamers uh fnt crew we are going to do a fan meetup on saturday night um location tba we're still finalizing the details have to you know figure out between one of these two places and then we're going to announce it probably tomorrow or maybe the next day at latest um, we are going to be doing a meetup outside of megacon as well so if anyone's been waiting for that Hmm. Well, maybe we should collab on that. Maybe. I'll let you know. Oh my god. We're gonna fly Mahler out too. That'd be great. I'm just we kidding. Show he's, up. he's banned. His passport got revoked. Damn. Wow. Because the thing we is, he could be there. We wouldn't even know. We wouldn't know. Well, we'd recognize his voice. That's well, what he... I do want to do when I first go to like a meet up with you guys. I want to turn up. I was like. Hey everybody, I'm a big fan of F and T. <laughs> like, with like big glasses on or something, you could all be like, uh oh, hi, hi. Then I'll hey, be like, it's me, by the way. Do your Han Solo voice. What's my Han Solo voice? Uh, you've done it different parts in Force Awakens, I think. In your Force Awakens review. I did? For Han Solo? I thought you did, didn't you? Do you mean like the Sebastian Stan or 
No, sorry, not Bastion Sebastian Stan. What's the, what's the Alden Ehrenreich? That's oh, Alden, Alden Aaron Third Reich. Yeah. <laughs> what the? Fuck? <laughs> I don't think that was his name. But yeah, sure. He had changed it because it was so controversial. Mm -hmm. You've never done a Harrison Ford Han Solo impression. I don't know. I don't. This doesn't sound familiar at all. What his name isn't even. Uh, sorry, his voice isn't even that memeable. It's like a normal voice. Okay. Yeah, I guess no one took that 10K, eh? So I made a. Did you guys see that? I made a uh, offer to anyone who can find a clip of me, where I say, "Women don't belong in Star Wars," or "Star Wars isn't for women." That I'm going to give them ten thousand dollars. Well, clip that. Um... I, I already said it in writing, and I said it in a video. No, I mean, you literally just said it. We've got a no, two-second clip of you. Off. Well, I was we, got him. we got him, boys. I oh. will take a finder's fee. <laughs> they, need to, they need to link back to the video for the context. Mm. There's, there's going to be some AI fuckers out there. I will be making no offers about that. All right. Claude is the strong female character to me. <laughs> Mauler, why do, why do I remember that? Claude, Character. the fucking the, the yeah. weird penis alien. monster. That's what I'm saying. Like, why would I remember that? It's like I don't know. That's just stuff I don't you know. remember. He just looks like a friendly guy. He yeah, would be. I, a, he would be a gay monster. He looks like a gay monster. He does. He looks exactly like a penis. Right? So of course he'd be gay. <laughs> um, but I do think that the the fact that we remember Cloud's name and we can't remember a single character from Andor. Very interesting to me. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even know what that means though, because Claude doesn't even have a line. <laughs> I know, but it's like that fucking like stands out. Claude the penis monster, who I don't even think like I don't think anybody's like is there might be one time they run by like, hey Claude, like do this or whatever. He's like <laughs> he's like, I don't have arms. But <laughs> I just love the idea. You go to a Star Wars con, it's like Mark Hamill's line is big and everyone else is up in this huge queue. And you're like, oh, what's this for? It's like Claude, obviously. <laughs> he's, he's over there <laughs> signing autographs and stuff. What does he sound uh, like? I don't know. Oh, I feel like that's what he sounds like. It sounds like Han Solo. Bro, what if he opened his mouth and he's like, well, kid, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened here. The message transfer shit. <laughs> suggestion for the next star wars the next sins versus wins that's a movie you guys see as a middle what's a movie you guys see as a middle of the road should be suicide squad so they, yeah they're saying we do uh on ufap we, we put cinema wins and cinema sins against each other we score them on how good they do an assessment of a film uh first one sins one second one wins one so now we need and we did like a bad movie and a good movie so now we want to do like a middle of the roads movie and see which one wins mm. We're thinking of doing uh, the Mario movie. Let's, let's see which oh, one yeah, be cool. assesses that better because that feels like a like middle of the road type thing. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I think Ahsoka was a good character in the Clone Wars. What about you guys? Well, my answer is worthless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're Ryan though. Don't let him. I, every, I think everybody knows mine. I don't like Ahsoka. <gasps> Oof. That's right. He's the one I deserve. Mm -hmm. Tell them about what Nick said about his fight with Hayden in the temple being so brutal they had to downside it to a hologram. Yeah. Well, yeah, go watch the freaking, go watch the vlog. Or go watch the clip on my Instagram. But essentially, yeah, we were supposed to get Hayden fighting. Um, you know the hologram that Obi-Wan sees? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he's killing the kids. Oh, he's, oh, he's saying tell you guys. Oh, yeah, okay. So he's telling, killing... No, not the kids. He's killing uh, well, Sandrelig he... and choking. Yeah, it, well, yeah. So that was actually supposed to be a full-on fight. And Anakin, like, beheads dudes and just fucking chokes one out, crushes them. Uh, so and, mean. Yeah, George actually cut it out. He said it was... Uh... It was, like, too violent, right? So he, like, made him shrink it down to... Like, you get a little taste of it on a hologram that you could get away with it to show some brutality, but not... not just Anakin and dismembering people the entire time. Yeah. Like I, I would I would love to have seen Anakin versus Syndralic. Um we we do get to play through it in Revenge of the Sith, the video game. Um, but yeah, like seeing seeing Anakin go up against like essentially the Jedi battle master at the time um would have been fucking awesome. Oh well. Order sixty six movie where nobody actually dies, they'll escape and then we make a bunch of TV shows. Be great. Be, like that would be great. The origins of every survivor of Order sixty six, season one, sixty four episodes. <laughs> we couldn't Could, fit them all into season one. 
You do like weekly releases and it goes over a year. Well, then you have, you have to do that storyline of like, what happened during Order 66? Like they tell us all a Jedi got killed, but I don't know. I don't believe it. What were they covering up? What were they doing in that building? They call it 66 because that's how many people actually died. What's up, Kevin? <laughs> the true KK said Indy the is a hero. Indiana Jones game made for modern audiences, huh? You know the Indiana Jones game? I find it interesting that everyone's like tuning on it. Scottish. Um, he is Scottish and Swiss, I believe, right? Yeah, but, well, it depends on, are they trying to say, because this is in relation to the accent conversation, right? What, Sean Connery? Well, yeah, but, you know, not all of them. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, if you're talking lineage, um, it's different than accent, obviously. But I, I do think that Bond is Scott, part Scottish, part Swiss. Am I making that up? I am not familiar with the... Are you talking about, like, Fleming's original Bond versus, like, what he is in Doctor No or whatever? Yeah, Fleming's novels meticulous to describe James Bond's Scottish Swiss background. Yeah, yeah there you go. I'm, um, I love James Bond, dude. So yeah, well, uh, just quick, what I was going to bring up about the Indiana Jones thing, I was curious if you feel the same way, Ryan, but I thought from the trailer that looked like an incredibly lame game, and then everyone was like, oh my god, it's that clip that uh, makes people think it's going to be bad. The thing that made everyone like it was the music and punching people, but if you look at it, it looks so uh, scripted. So and then I, I actually was like okay with the trailer in terms of it feeling like an Indiana Jones adventure. You know what I mean? I was like, um, the the things that I didn't like were first person gameplay. If I'm if I'm playing like me or whatever, I'm fine, you know, being first person. If I'm playing a fucking character that I love to see, like Indiana Jones, I kind of want to see Indiana Jones. Uh, also, the whipping looks a little bit strange in first person, and I feel like just the character that Indy is with a whip and then a revolver that the gameplay could get really repetitive just whipping people bringing them in and punching them i think genuinely but... everyone's imagination is what makes them think the game would be good from that trailer if you watch the trailer and pay attention to everything they show you it looks really simplistic and at times really restricted like i could imagine you know the puzzle piece that he puts on the wall like yeah. a gear or whatever i could picture there being a huge room and it's like there's a wall there's three gear pieces and there's three gear slots yes that make sure you put the right one in the right place and then hit the switch and that's it like i could picture that's what it is I could picture that too. Just, for me, just seeing what was there, I I didn't mind like the entire store, like the idea of it. Um, I liked how they like I like that opening sequence with the guy talking shit to him when he's buried in the sand and everything. A lot of it felt like a, a James Bond adventure, but there's it's way too soon to know if that game's gonna be any good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and certainly there's one line that stands out um, when she's like, "Let's see if you can keep up." Um, he's like. What me with you, whatever, and then he just goes psh, psh, into a face over. <laughs> Keep up yeah. with this, bitch. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of the like, final mm -hmm. James Bond? What's that? Wait, what was that? What do you think of the final James Bond movie? I didn't like it. I think that, um, that Daniel Craig's James Bond is disconnected from all the other Bond movies. I think that's really the only way you can look at it, even yeah. like from the I really like Casino Royale. Like, I, I fucking love that movie. But from the start of that, if you're doing a Bond origin, you can't have female M. Like, it makes no fucking sense. And they transitioned from female M to Ray Fiennes. Am I saying that right, Welshman? Yeah. Um, to Ray Fiennes, who is supposed to be M from the, the first one. So it, it doesn't make any sense. And yeah, it's weird. I, I, with the journey they put Daniel Craig on, the ending kind of makes sense because this is not James Bond like we've seen before. This is James Bond who is fucking obsessed over Vesper dying. And right. that's like, that has just been the shadow that hung over him the entire time. And I, I hate it. Like, I hate the, the choices they made. But in terms of what they did in finale with him going out the way he did, it makes sense for what they did at this version of James Bond. Just what happens, it's a fucking terrible version. If yeah, and just him sense. going out, going out at the end like that. I don't know. It, it's not yet character development. I get it, but that's yeah, James Bond, man. Yeah, it, it's it, it doesn't fit. Like you really have to disconnect that in your mind with every well, other James Bond iteration we've ever had. There are probably some Is actors it... who hate the roles they play and get away with it, but he didn't. Like you can fucking smell it when you watch those films that he hates being Bond. Yeah, Daniel Craig. 
Yeah, he hated being. He said that he would rather like have fucking his eyes pulled out than play Bond again or something. Like he that. said he'd rather slash his wrists yeah. than play James Bond again. And this is before he signed up to do the last one. Yeah. What? Didn't he get paid well, like two hundred and thirty million euros? Oh yeah, he got a lot. The last he one. Got a lot. The thing is, if you watch, uh, what is it called? Yeah. Fucking Quantum of Solace and Spectre. Mm. Those two specifically are fucking atrocious. Um, Skyfall is like bad but weird. This this Skyfall relies a lot upon nostalgia. nostalgia. Yeah. Um. And I I, I like Skyfall. Casino Royale is the best one. Um. I I, yes. I I I like Skyfall. Quantum is horrific. Spectre. I I like parts of it a lot, but they made it way too convoluted. Um. I kind of hate it. <laughs> it. Like 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 there's parts of it I like, but the the problem is so fucking convoluted, and it's like the the third time in that series that like. Oh Bond, you're too old for this. Oh, you're washed up. And it's like, okay, we fucking get it. Um, but having him be his half brother or his uh, adopted brother and their dad died, all that shit was way too convoluted to fit into one movie with Blofeld. Like, yeah, yeah. Couldn't. Do By the it. way, you know uh, Ray Fines. His full name is Rafe Nathaniel Twistleton Wycombe Fines. Jesus. <laughs> it's like it's crazy. It's like I get why he shortened it. Al is like Albus Wolfric Percival Brian Dumbledore. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. There's like 50 million names in there. You guys have middle names? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hmm. I have That's seven. Cool. Really? I'm not going to tell you, though. I would dox oh, myself completely. So crazy. Is one of them Rufus? Three of them, actually. I figured. Yeah. Is one of them King Tut? I wish. See, now you look pale with this thing on. I know. Yeah. <laughs> now you look... <laughs> I got fucked up my you hair, dude. Dying. Now you got great hair. Don't worry about it. Well, listen. No, I was thinking. Not, not, that, not that I don't mind the compliment, but from you, I'm not know how, I don't know how much it means. It, it, yeah. means, it means a fucking lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could have some hair and you'd be like, oh, God, I'm jealous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> have like a wisp like going this way be like, you're like oh, oh god i'm so envious of that oh, he's got the best. <laughs> yeah i could just All imagine right. running my finger through it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, it's like alfalfa excited for the vader episode two just wondering if you have any creative plans for original music score yeah it'll all be original probably i'll get fucking copyrighted again even though it's original music uh hail everyone really enjoy you all taking talking together with respect and understanding like this would love to hear theory and ryan's opinions on Kreia's viewpoint of the force from kotor 2. i didn't play kotor 2 and how she wanted to destroy it i think the sith triumphant were actually pretty awesome though, to be honest. yeah i think we we talked about that uh a while ago when i was on yeah you got to play kotor 2 man restore yeah. restored content mod the best way to do it that, that was a rush game because of like how massively popular kotor was mm -hmm. like that the fact that i think that game got made in like nine months and obviously they used a lot of assets from the first one but they changed a lot of shit too um yeah really could have done with another year's worth of development but in, in terms of like crazy viewpoint on the forest Kreia is one of the you know, most you're going to see a lot of uh, videos. If you search about Kreia on YouTube, you see a lot of videos by people breaking down the way she talks about everything and the the nature of the force itself, the light side and the dark side. And it's very interesting. And, you know, the fact that she set out to basically fucking destroy everything and bring everything down. It's kind of a, a unique backstory for somebody. Please excuse me, guys. I just have to... Uh dealing with the, the saber manufacturers right now so i'm still here you're excused ryan mm. if you could read that one i'd appreciate it uh juliano casade for uh aussie 10 but i thought it was fucking italian maybe he's australian theory i've reached out before regarding my main channel it's blocked here i cannot super chat or interact my main channel name is swp1 can you help me please you're my only that's owner. weird i don't know why you'd, why it'd be blocked I have no idea. Uh, sometimes I wonder if YouTube is trying to take over. 
Uh, but yeah, I noticed that on my gaming channel for over a year now, people can't really super chat much. It's strange. Don't know. Very strange. But it seems to be working for everyone else. So like, we have how many super chats we got tonight? Over 170. So. So he's saying yeah. it's user error, Adriano. That's what he just said. Sorry, we don't know. Um, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I'll have to check the blocked account, but I don't think you're blocked. Yeah, Legend Tom Hardy is the Cray Twins. To be honest, his accent is so thick on top of his mumbling is almost inaudible. Mahler will have to judge. Great movie. It says Night King 01. Well, I yeah, I haven't seen it, but... Um... You, know, you can't go wrong with Tom Hardy, right? Right? No, Tom Hardy's dope. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah, he's cool. Venom's great. He's never had any characters that are inaudible or mumbly. Hmm. Juan, I think I think his most I think his most inaudible was probably in Lawless. In Lawless? Yeah, you guys remember that? That's, I don't know. Was, was Sheila Buff in that? Was that someone else? Sheila Buff. La Biaf. Um, big play Quay Mahler. All your podcasts start in the middle of work, you Welsh fuck. Love your work though. <laughs> First time super chatter. Same for Theory and RK. I'm Thank sorry, you, big play Quay. All my friends are on the other side of the planet. Okay, so all the British people have to suffer if they want to listen to what I'm up to. Well, he's American, huh? He's American. How do you know? Because it says four ninety nine, like you just super chat in American dollars. Yeah, you can still be in Britain super chat in dollars. I don't know how this shit works. It would say pounds, or whatever. You I mean, I, like, like a... maybe he's using a VPN. I, I don't know. Yeah, it big could play be a... Quay. I'm just saying, big play Quay sounds like an American. Well, then, and also he called you a Welsh fuck. In that case, that's his fault because you guys, this is on your time or whatever. Wait, what time is it in America right now? Yeah, this is like. 8 31 p.m oh wait you said middle of work wait is that the middle of work for you guys um, i guess the start is maybe depends well, on whatever you watch are. the we, we have, then <laughs> we, have, we have more than one time zone because we're actually a, a big country oh i must suck kind of does yeah mm -hmm. you're like, a suck because the, theory usually says hey this is on at two and i have to be like you mean pacific right and he's like oh yeah i have five eastern and when this time he's like, up. we start at five now, Miami time, is what he said. Not, not, not like a time zone. Five <laughs> Miami off. time is what he said. Whenever we what book whatever. American guests, every time it's a different fucking set of letters. They're like, I'm in C flea flea and blah blah blah, Z zettle diddle. And it's like, what the fuck does any of that mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so officially, if any of you got an Annie episode three saber from me, spam one right now. If you ordered it, before today then yours is going to be coming out uh it's going to be shipping tomorrow so mm. if you still want it out quick get a few more orders in uh until the 25th after that um it'll be in february until salt and race skywalker twitter fans get so mad at me when i tell them she's not a skywalker oh whatever that's dude it's it, you just gotta be like yeah whatever honestly it, they're gonna have their own rhetoric on it and that's honestly disney's fucking fault for creating something like that and dividing the fan base like that but um at the end of the day you know people are going to enjoy what they want to enjoy and i think that's i'm all for that so as long as everyone can enjoy it then it's great i mean i think you i just didn't even realize it should be controversial the fact that she could just go like i'm a skywalker and i was like no imagine palpatine said that would we be defending it as ardently like yeah palpatine is a skywalker look at him go I firmly believe that people are able to choose their own identity regardless of whether we're talking about gender or race or surname. So I have no problems with it, obviously. As someone who likes a lot of Filoni's work, especially Clone Wars, I've loved seeing Mahler and Ryan on the show. Almost as if you can talk, you can like people who don't agree with everything you agree with. Yeah, they're honestly, I think of them as good friends. So thank you, uh, Orcas. Just, yeah, I mean, people don't get that. Uh it, it's so I'm... weird. Like you gotta you gotta you gotta hang out with people that are in your echo chamber that are yes men. Like, no, why would you want that? It's so much more 
I would say inclusive to be talking to people that have different views and opinions of everything. It, it, it broadens your horizons and makes you more capable of being able to ingest other forms of opinions. It's great. I find more we'll dis- the things to disagree with Ryan on, like passionately, because I always feel like you bring out a hot take and then I'm sitting there, like on FNT, like I don't know, that just seems right. Then, <laughs> like, uh, you know, one day. Really, while we've been it's... sitting here, I've had three of these, but three fucking liters, man. I got to take another piss. That's a lot. <laughs> I like yeah. as crazy as it sounds when I'm on FNT, I'm usually like the person who's trying to like dial it back a little bit and give <laughs> what I think is a little more like balanced perspective. Cause it just depends, right? It's like kind of like what theory just said. If we're all just fucking shitting all over the same thing, like, well, well let's think of it from this perspective. What could they be thinking this? Could this have been what they meant? Even if I don't like, even if I'm not super in, you know, devoted to that frame of thought, just because I think it's fun to actually have those discussions and hear those arguments. But well, let's challenge you right now. Uh, say that what is the best aspect of Dave Filoni as a creator? The best aspect of Dave Filoni. Um, I think that uh, da- what is true is that Dave Filoni and his work on Clone Wars was able to get uh, a, an entire generation of people actually invested in like the character of Ahsoka, right? The, uh, by generation, I mean the people that happened to be watching Clone Wars at that time. So he has been involved with a character that one time people really liked. I like, you have to give that to him. And a lot of people really liked Ahsoka during Clone Wars. So you would think that in theory, he should be able to tell stories in the Star Wars universe, even if they're ancillary attached to other characters that people could get invested in. But I don't like that. You know what I mean? I I don't like her character. I don't like pretty much anything I've ever seen Dave Filoni do. So it's tough for me to tell you what what the best aspect of him as a a creator is. Um, This is what I'll say. I actually think that, you know, Dave, I think Dave is very knowledgeable about Star Wars. The problem is I don't think he gives a fuck about anyone's vision except for his. Mm. I'll say that. I think Dave's very knowledgeable on Star Wars. Um, I think that's undeniable. But the problem is it doesn't come with like a, a reverence for anyone else who's worked on it. He only cares about his plan, including even fucking George Lucas, by the way. Like G- George, who wanted Ahsoka to die, who thought Ahsoka should die, had arguments with Dave saying, no, she, she has to die, blah, blah, blah. What have we seen? Ahsoka becomes basically the center of the Star Wars universe in in for Dave Filoni. So it's good that you've wrapped that up right when he arrives so that you know he doesn't have to experience any of that. Dave we've, we've talked about it before. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So but yeah, it was convenient. Mm-hmm. We just solved uh world hunger. Yeah. yeah. How'd you do that? Um we decided to go the Thanos route, kill half the population. Oh, sick. Nice. The other half can eat the corpses then. So just reduce the demand. Correct. Don't actually increase the food. Okay, cool. Yeah. How has nobody thought of this before? What the fuck? I don't know. People are so dumb. Hot take. 80% of Bond films are really bad. Just big budget explosions. Exploration. B films. Also Bond being Scottish, I believe. Fleming added in after the movie. Hmm. He may have done it after, like, Sean Connery was cast, maybe, but, like, certainly in the novels. As for big budget exploration B films, I thought they were, for some reason, I read that first time and thought they'd said, like, they were, well, it doesn't matter. Um, They're probably thinking of Roger Moore's era more than anything, I'd imagine. Um, Roger Moore's era is so hit or miss. Yeah. Um, It's like, awesome Bond movie, fucking dog shit. Uh, mm. Awesome Bond movie, awful. I love Roger Moore, but he's yeah. Uh, that era is kind of like my least favorite Bond. I, I, I would rather see. I would rather Sean see ten Connery. Timothy Dalton movies. Yeah, Timothy Dalton was great. Uh, Roger Moore was. I I didn't really connect with him that much when I was a kid. I think Sean Connery, Timothy Dalton. I didn't like Pierce Brosnan's portrayal of Bond. He's Did my you? favorite. <laughs> I I, really? I like him. He he's like to me he's a. Uh, Timothy Dalton was a little bit ahead of his time. Timothy Dalton, um, like, especially shifting from Roger Moore, I guess I mean, like, the one, you know, shifting from Roger Moore to Timothy Dalton are, like, so polar opposites. Because right. the Roger Moore are all the super, like, slapsticky, like, outrageous, yeah, yeah, yeah. fun type yeah. of things. Timothy Dalton's are, like, pretty fucking dark. 
And I think that was too vehemently like shifted one way. I don't think people are really ready for that from Bond. So I think it was kind of ahead of his time. But Pierce Brosnan's a good balance, though. He he brought it a little bit down, a little more like light in tone uh, than well, Stone Dalton was, certainly. But. What's crazy to me about uh, Brosnan's run is like Goldeneye. That's my favorite Bond film of all time. I think like yeah. I have so much to praise about how they how they did it. Tomorrow Never Dies is like it's fine. It's getting a little bit weird. And then Will Did Not Enough is really goofy, and they're like they're completely losing touch with whatever they had. And then Die Another Day is a clown film like that. They, it's so weird how they progressed over the four films, just <laughs> becoming more and more insane. They got out ra- like uh, Die Another Day is freaking because Die Another Day is the one with the solar late like satellite like fucking laser yeah. beam ice one yeah 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 the guy with diamonds in his face and the yeah the I aging i never it. sleep thing yeah there's so much goofy shit in there madonna's in it i should watch yeah. it is she she is but she also does the theme song <sighs> die another day which one was the one with grace jones uh let me find out i can't remember I remember that one. Oh, mayday you mean a View to Kill? A View to a Kill, sorry? A View to a Kill, yeah. Is that with Sean Connery? Uh, I want to say Roger Moore, but... A View to a, a Kill. View... <laughs> to a Kill. I don't remember who is that one. God, I love Bond movies. A View to a Kill. Isn't that... I thought it was more, but there, there's one like later one that... Uh, that Sean Connery does, but I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, it's View to a Kill is Roger Moore. Oh, okay, yes, Grace Jones, cool. Roger Moore's seventh and final appearance. If I comment in the chat, they won't even show. I think I'm blocked. That's weird. Maybe you, maybe YouTube blocked you. I have no idea. But I mean, super chats are coming through here, so. You What's up, Rossi? A, you have to be a misogynist to comment in this chat. Oh, mm-hmm. God. Uh, whatever. To be considered a Skywalker, pretty sure you need to lose at least one limb. Ray's just taking the easy route by not... Yes, I know. She's just getting a leg up everywhere. Well, she loses yeah. other people's limbs. Oh, my gosh, bro. Another 50. J. Mac, thank you. What the heck? It's because he likes my hat. Yeah. It's insane. It's definitely the hat. It is a hat. You're the good luck charm. Rocking it. Rocking. What are you guys doing tonight? Because we just finished Super Chess. So. I, I need to fucking leave pretty like now. <laughs> well, yeah. It's been longer than I should have. We should probably wrap up because there's something I want to show you as well, but off stream uh, for a stream idea potentially. I'm not sure. Okay. Wow. This is a four hour. Oh, no, I was doing it for half an hour. Yeah. Three and a half hour. Crazy. Nice. Okay. Cool. Well, um, I assume we're not going to be doing it next Monday. Because of uh, MegaCon? What is next Monday? Next Monday will be a couple days before MegaCon, but obviously you're mobile. It's 29th. Uh, no, I'll be in Orlando by then. There you go. So we could even do it together. Maybe. Ooh, yeah, she could wear the yeah. hat. You can wear Fuck <laughs> yeah, dude. Let's just do it. <laughs> Just invite myself over to your house. Hey, man. What's up? Oh. Saying this is a Bond guy that thinks on Her Majesty's Secret Service is the best in the series behind Casino Royale, which, in my opinion, is superior to the book. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I saw uh, in her on Her Majesty's Secret Service. That's Maybe. George, the one that George like Lazenby one. one. No, that, that's yeah, that the good. one George Lazenby one. Yeah, that he did. Right. What I'll say is, I think a lot of people, when looking back on Bond, are mainly remembering the films they loved. They're not thinking about the many they kind of ignored and went, oh, that not, eh, that not that one. Ooh, that's not that one. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, eh, not that one. And there's some like Moonraker where people are like, it's goofy, but come on. <laughs> like, yeah. We love it. This is, yeah, it's really up to, it's up to you. I can understand the perspective. Yeah, right. All right, boys. Well, that was it for the show tonight. Uh, Mahler, I'll stay on so, I, so we can. Chat. Um, Ryan, can you stay on for a sec too? Sure. Man. Okay, boys, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, if we don't, there'll be an announcement, but there's going to be a ton of videos and vlogs and fun stuff of all of us actually hanging out in person. So stay tuned for that. MegaCon's mm-hmm. going to be pretty wild. Love you all. Check out the Sabres. May the force be with you. Bye. With theory and more. What's the situation?